listen to the voice of survival podcast every other friday right here on the journey into comics network journeyintocomics.com the following podcast is a journey into comics network production Fuck you, Iraq. Welcome to Podcast Trophy, episode 40. I'm your host, Dick. My co-host, Tyler, hates me. God, you're a piece of shit. We have a mystery guest today. Yeah. I've I've been hyping this up now for like a day and a half, two days. Just to piss off Blaine. Just to piss you off that I had a guest that you weren't allowed to know who it was. And you, you guessed who it was immediately. I was just really good at not letting you know who it was. That's okay. You're like... Yeah, I, I started making guesses, and you're like, there's a good chance I'm not going to tell you even if I, if you guess it. I'm like, okay. I, I just assumed, you know, you wouldn't bring anybody on here that I would just was just a piece of shit. I am so not a raper. Instead, you did bring a piece of shit, but yeah, at least he's, he's a piece of shit that I like. He's a good piece of shit. He's a, he's a piece of shit that I like. He fits in well with us. <laughs> you guys have heard him before on Journey into Wrestling. He's back for podcastrophy, and I'm going to be living in his house in a month. That's and... a <laughs> uh, Welcome, Joe. Hey. Talk into the microphone, yeah. Joe. Into the microphone. <laughs> That's how microphones work. <laughs> I'm a drummer. I don't use microphones. Yeah, I know. You don't do well, much. It's okay as but, drummer. But think about this, though. The, micro, the mic stand is a stick. So you should know at yeah. least like how to. Uh, oh, okay. oh, oh. You, should you should at least you should at least know what to do with that. <laughs> okay. Like, all right, all right. You know okay. how to hold a stick. Okay. <sighs> how the hell are you doing, Joe? Uh, 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 <laughs> we go into that now. No, no, no. We'll <laughs> no, we go into that in a bit. <laughs> we we got to get the pleasantries. Over you know, with. you know how I'm doing. <laughs> you you know how I do. You know how I'm doing. He was like a a belligerent Blaine or Bane there for a second. <laughs> you know how I'm doing. <laughs> What does a belligerent Blaine look like? That <laughs> I'm belligerent with a like hat. Thirty percent of the time, right? Just thirty statistics. Mm. But yeah. So real quick, before we get into topics, uh, I've been doing this poll thing with Podcastrophy, <laughs> which you were quite pissed off at me. Last for. week, last week I got my ass fucking kicked, uh, and you're never gonna let me forget it, but. I haven't. Have I brought it up? No, but you're never gonna let me forget it. Um, this week I just did a simple one. Hey, podcast fee peeps, who's the better sidekick here? And you had a choice between Chewy and Groot. Both great choices. Uh, my vote was Chewy. I think a good portion of pretty much everybody else voted for Groot, but Chewy ended up winning. Yep. Fifty-eight to forty-two out of sixty-seven votes. You can't beat a classic. No, well. Groot is yeah, also cool. a classic character, but... No one knows him outside of the fame he's received in the last four years. Uh, fans of the comic know who Groot is. So, like, a whole 200 people. Oh, uh, There's more than 200 <laughs> people that follow I know, I'm talking series. shit. But uh, still, you know... The, uh, the, thing, the thing about this one is there's not a bad choice. Either way. Mm-hmm. That's why I posted it, because... Obviously, Chewie's an iconic character. You know, he's Han's number two guy. AJ, former guest, hopeful, hopeful future guest again, says, "Fuck that twig, little bitch." <laughs> well, I mean, that's the same sentiments that I have. But you know, Chewie's an iconic character. That motherfucker yes. rips people's arms off. But Groot also takes his spiny, thorny stick arm and just and rams it through people. Impales like seven <laughs> dudes at the same time. Yeah, so. No shit. And, you know, he sacrifices himself Look, for everybody else. Am I saying that Chewie would beat 
Groot in hand to hand combat? Fuck no. I don't he, think I don't think Chewie could beat Groot. No. In oh hell no. Combat. Not even no, close. No. Not even close. But uh, if I were to pick as a sidekick, I would definitely pick Chewie. Yeah, I think you've got to. He's gonna die. Hmm? He's gonna die. It, see, that's the other thing. People keep saying that Chewie let Han die. Chewie did not let Han. No. Die. Chewie expected Wait, Han. Wait. What? You've seen The Force Awakens. Okay. All right. Chewie, <laughs> Chewie didn't expect Ben to kill his dad. Chewie knew Ben as a child. Like that's yeah. as, that's as much Chewie's nephew as it is anything. And it's like if anybody can bring him back, it's his, it's Han, you know. And they have that exchange, and the whole time Chewie's working. Chewie's fucking putting bombs up places, and then he just happens to come in at the end, right before Ben fucking stabs him, and it's like. You see that fucking agonizing howl that he lets out. Yeah. Which is, is yeah. that in itself is very fucking powerful. Mm -hmm. Because there's not many times throughout Star Wars, if any, of any iteration, whether it's comics, books, the movies, cartoons, anything, that you really see a lot of emotion from Chewie other than anger and, like, sarcasm. <laughs> sarcasm in quotations. Right, like, I mean, because you, don't, you never know what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But when he fucking howls like that, it's that that is real fucking emotion. Jennifer waved. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think whatever her name is now. Chewie, Chewie had to get the win. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and you know, he, right after he let out that howl, he just went ham. Yeah, he fucking tried to kill Ben. <laughs> He's like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's like it's just like what I said. Ben is like Chewie's nephew, essentially. Uh, yeah, I was about to bring that up. I'm so glad that you you basically called him Uncle Chewie, and he's like he's like the that friend of your dad's that's always around. Yeah. And like, and I got a bunch of those. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I, got a, I got so many of those. Like, oh, what's up, Uncle Marty? Growing up in a military family, yeah, I have a shit ton of those guys. And yeah, mine are just a bunch of drunk guys that yeah, mine are too. Hung out and played softball say, with like, them. <laughs> that goes hand in hand, but. <laughs> you know, fucking Chewie's like you. You not only betrayed your dad and your family, but you mm. you betrayed me because even though you were doing wrong, I had hoped that, bruh. I yeah, <laughs> I had hoped yeah. that fucking Dude. Han what could bring hell? him back, and you fucking you did the ultimate thing that you should not do. If Chewie was down there, he probably would have ripped his arms off. So <laughs> that, that's the go-to. I mean, what else are you gonna do if you're a Wookie? Right, well, you rip yeah. people's arms off and you fuck shit up. Beat people to death. With their arms. <laughs> Blood. With their own yeah, with arms, their yes. Own arms. You're yeah. right. You're Why right. I have, I have a request for next week. What's that? Can we get a table? Like, Do you have, no, a, car it. Do you have a cardboard table? A cardboard table? A cardboard table. table. Uh, a card table? Card table, yeah. What Jeez. the fuck? Sorry. Uh, it's have, been a long day. I have I have I haven't even I, fucked up yet. I, no, Joe hasn't fucked That's up. That's like fuck's your excuse. Uh, it was a long day. Hey, yeah. fuck yourself, pal. <laughs> yeah, you didn't go through half the shit that we went through. Who did I work with today? Oh <laughs> no, here we go. I worked with Dave and Chris. Cool. Oh, holy shit. So I was bored off my ass. We all worked day. with Tiffany and Doris, so fuck yourself. I get it. And Eddie. yours is way worse. And I had to work with Eddie. Yours is way worse. I, I concede that. And yet I have not fucked up yet. <laughs> it's yeah. okay. It's okay. We all have our moments. Uh but yeah, we need a table so we can not put our mics on it. <laughs> Oh, just have the table. Yes, there. we'll we'll just have it as, as a set right. piece. Uh since Good you know since Aaron table Sperling table. Sperling has such a hard on for tables. And he thinks our show needs a table. What's wrong with holding I mean it's yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna get into that. We can. <laughs> get into I, don't want to. I have no issue getting into it. I don't want to. We could just but no, he, he he seriously like he went and commented on like another post from on uh, in Nerds in the Round Table and it's it's just more table jokes it's like we could dude. have one just to put lane through and just oh mm. just for wearing i'm down your hat no fuck your hat <laughs> your hat i i will have to say this as much as i dislike flash zoom is a badass villain like Zo all of the speedster villains are really yes cool. zoom and reverse flash reverse yep. flash is one of my favorite villains of all time i really dig zoom so boo hello Pod <laughs> podcast faux pas what the fuck that was? <laughs> My phone. Sonic. Come on. Come on. I knew where it was from. I did not know what it was. Ah, yeah. I did Sonic not. Me. Sonic yeah. rings. Come on, man. I did not. 
All right, what's our first fucking topic? Come on. What do you got? What do I have? What do you got? What do you got? Mine's more of like the deeper topic. Uh, all of my topics are deep, so. Well, actually, no, no, no. Um... <laughs> no, I have a no. piece of shit topic Wait, we can I, talk I, about. Really I, do have, I do have a piece of shit topic, but it's not a piece of shit topic because it's a cool thing. Uh, Coheed and Cambria is finally coming out with a new album. So that's a cool piece of shit topic. Yeah, because I'm a big Coheed and Cambria fan. It's been years since their last album, which was different from any of the albums that they put out before that, um, Coheed and Cambria's thing has always kind of been telling a narrative. Uh, Is that the one where you tried to get Blaine interested and you didn't give a shit? You yeah, got yeah, I got fucking <laughs> You pissed. got really mad. Because I, I was I was tagging him in shit for like a week, and I was like, oh, why yeah. is he not saying anything back? And then I tried to show him at lunch, and he basically just brushed me off, and I was like, you know he what? He does that to me, too. You know what, dude? Me, too. Fuck yourself. <laughs> uh-huh. I like Coheed and Cambria. Coheed's badass. Yeah, I remember you got pissed off and went back to the lunch line. <laughs> yeah, I went to a fucking yeah. candy bar to drown my sorrows. <laughs> oh my god, I remember that. Was but no, so this is, it's been years <laughs> since the last Coheed album. Uh, mm-hmm. Six years, seven years, or five or six years, something like that. Yeah, you're real dedicated, you can't remember. Fuck off, Joe. Joe, talk into your microphone. Yeah. But, <laughs> so. People gotta is, hear you. This is Coheed going back to what they're doing. They're telling a story and a narrative with this album. They've released... Uh, one thing that I've always liked about Coheed is most of their songs have a prologue. Or if not just a prologue for the whole album. And they released the prologue and... Or prologue. Prologue and their first song off of the album. Which is not bad. It's actually pretty good. But the first time I was in high school, the first time I heard Welcome Home, it was like... Fuck yeah, I did. I do this. like that song. It's a it's a great song. I like I like Coheed. I just haven't delved into them. Do it because it's worth they're they're worth it. Now that I got Spotify, I think I'll do that. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I just I I wanted to we were I knew we were going to talk about music a little bit. I knew this was a quick one. I'm I'm excited to listen to the rest of the album, especially mm-hmm. you know we've talked like five episodes in a row now about bands releasing albums this year that are fucking phenomenal. <laughs> And bands that are releasing albums that are not good at all, like yes. Three Days Grace, yes, terrible fucking album. Mm. Um, but I, I hope this is one that's on the good side because mm-hmm. they have the talent, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll start checking them out, and I'll probably check this out when it comes out. I, I actually surprised Blaine. What was it last week? With the Devil yeah, Driver? you were listening to Devil Driver, <laughs> who I'm going to see later this year with Guar. It was it was random. I had it on. A I don't want to see Guar. Guar is not. It's just something that I've never been interested. in. Me either. I don't want to see them, but I'm going for Devil Driver. So and there's, you know what? Are you gonna listen to Devil Driver and then leave? Probably not. I'll watch Guar. Why? Because I'm. Why not? I haven't seen them, so might as well. And you just literally said you don't want to see Guar, yeah. but I don't. You're but no, I mean, if I'm paying for a show, I'm paying for a show. I'm gonna sit. You made me leave you Iced Earth. For one show, though. I didn't make you leave <laughs> Iced Earth. You asked me if you if you asked me if you we were could leave. passing out. I said, Are you yeah. ready to go? You were passing out too. I we were been, both passing out. I would have been passing out too. So. Uh, no, that was actually it was actually not that bad of a show except for that no, guy was, that kept unplugging his guitar. Oh yeah, his solo. He kept yeah. Staying, he's, Literally, this this Seven old yeah. Who was that? Kill ritual. Kill ritual. From yeah, from California. Mm-hmm. They're they kept mm-hmm. the guitarist kept stepping on the cable and pulling it out of Every his guitar. Every damn time. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Dawson says excited about the new Coheed album as well. Great band. Hoping to see them live this fall. Yeah, I I would really like to see them. I know they have. Uh... I don't know if it's the start of their tour or the end, or kind of the middle or the end of their tour, but they're coming through the Midwest. They've got two show dates in, uh, I think one's in Cleveland hmm. and one's in Cincinnati. And I thought about going to the one in Cincinnati, but it's a weekday. And then they've got one in oh, Chicago. Shit. And it's like, I, I hate going, I do everything in my power to avoid going to Chicago. As you should. As I should, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I don't know. What's going to happen? I, I might end up going to the Cincinnati show if I can finagle some time. But it, it it's kind of like what you were saying with Guar, except I actually want to see Coheed. I've never had an opportunity to see them before. And I know the Podfather's a big Coheed fan. Yeah. And I know he has seen them. So that would kind of be cool to be able to share that experience. Uh, 
Nate says, new Ghost album is amazing, infectious, and unforgettable. It's intelligent and fearless, weaving a concept to many styles. Mm. I'm not a big Ghost fan. I, I, I'll tell you right <laughs> now, I honestly have never listened to Ghost. They were ever. rather disappointing live. Well, that's the thing, though. A lot of bands are disappointing live. Well, yeah, like, shit, when we saw you know, August Burns Red, like, I listened to a few of the stuff that you'd sent me, and I got into it, but then... Yes, when we went to that show in Chicago. Well, I, like, think it, I think it was mostly because you were so blown away by Protest the Hero. Oh, no, that was badass. So you were you were so enamored by Protest the Hero that when August Burns Red came out, you were like, I, Yeah, eh. it was a little bit of a letdown. I'm not going to lie. They were really fucking good. So I went to a Christian concert when I was in high school at Ball State it's just okay. to basically get away. But the, the bands that were playing, there was three, three bands. The two opening acts... I had no idea who they were, and then the the main show was P.O.D. Oh. Yeah. So I was like... Was Katy Perry singing with her? No. Damn. <laughs> this was prior to Katy Perry. Um, but I, I was really pumped to see P.O.D., and the two bands were... One was called Red. Oh, I love Red. Oh, Red's yeah. Red badass. is yeah. badass. But they're, they're a Christian artist. Yes. I, I, never I thought, did not know that. I never thought that listening to a Christian artist... I could I could get something that I was used to, and Red's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember what the other band was called, but they were really really good too. But that that that's actually one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Yeah, it was that fucking ball state. Everybody was nuts, and it wasn't it wasn't the talking in tongues shit. It wasn't <laughs> the shit that you see on TV. It, it wasn't Joel Osteen. Yeah, you know. So I think there was a. <laughs> But the the point that I was trying to make was so many so many bands like the first time that I saw Seether, I didn't go to that show to see Seether, it was just kind of a bonus, mm-hmm. and they sounded like shit. They sounded absolutely awful. The vocals were out of fucking uh, time. The fucking music or the actual in- instrumental shit sounded like shit. Whoever their sound guy was, I bet they took him out back and shot him oh, after yeah. the show. <laughs> yeah, because the show I we've talked about it. The show I went to last summer. Uh, fantastic. And I, I, I've heard that from a lot of people, but we have, especially from people that don't go to a lot of concerts like me, we have such an, an idea of what bands are supposed to sound like That's how I feel. because of what they sound like in the studio. Yep. Yeah. And then you see them live and it's like, I've been that way. That's not how he sings. Why does he sound like that? Yeah, I've been That's that way like many like times. Live albums. You know, I've, I've had live albums and then... There are some good live albums. There's uh, some, but like for the most part... Queens, nineteen sixty nine or seventy, or something like that. Maybe sixty two. Live at the Bowl is one of the best live albums. Yeah. I don't remember the date, but that is one of the best live albums I've ever listened to. Black mm-hmm. Sabbath released a uh, live uh, compilation when I was in high school. That's like four discs. Uh, Fantastic! The version of Sweet Leaf that's on that song mm-hmm. made me not ever want to listen to the studio version again. But it's it's rare to find shit like that. I totally agree with you. I don't buy live albums because a yeah. lot of times they just sound like shit. Right. Well, you know, like you know, Brando and I were talking about if they ever redid like the S and M, if they did another one, and like what well, <laughs> you and I even talked about that. <laughs> oh man, and we were blowing Some... that actually out of the fucking water. Somebody. Somebody did. Did you post something on Facebook about that? I did. Yeah, and I and you're like, what songs would you want to hear? And I said, all of Saint, Saint Anger. Anger. And then I said, let's throw in some Lulu. <laughs> all of Saint Anger on a S and M album. Um, but no, I think uh, you know they did that, and then uh, like people have done that. It's not you know it's nothing that's never been done yeah. before. But then Kiss had an album similar. Holy shit, that was one of my biggest regrets ever. I just I don't like Kiss in general. Well, yeah. But I mean, to unnecessarily adding yeah. the symphonic mm-hmm. background. Now, to... So I've I've experienced this. So Lamb of God, they have a live album called Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. They also have another thing that they um, when you pre-ordered their 2012 album Resolution, it came with a live CD from like their 2009 2000, 2009 to 2011 tours, mm-hmm. and both of those CDs sound great, but. Uh, if you get like deluxe editions of their albums, like Sacrament or something, you get. Which you, I'm sure, always do. Yes, I, I. If there is a deluxe version, I usually get it because I like bonus tracks. I like getting that extra shit. Yeah, and it's for just like 
two bucks extra. You can get usually. that bonus track on Spotify now, though. But, I, but <laughs> once again, I the artwork's sometimes different. Right, the artwork's really Like, cool. I have this Kill Switch Engage tattoo. That's from the deluxe art. Right. And then I love like, it. Google it and then have them tattoo it from that. <laughs> I didn't say I needed the CD to get the tattoo. <laughs> But uh, yes, do. I do like to spend Brandon money. Uh, I do like, do to, spend like to spend money. Anyway, anyway, so uh, Lamb of God Sacrament, I believe it was Sacrament, had uh, two bonus tracks, which were Omerda and Laid to Rest live. Mm-hmm. And how was Omerda? Okay, so the kill, the kill, the kill switch, the Philadelphia version, fantastic. Right. The Sacrament version, like those live tracks. Yeah. Holy shit! It's like they recorded straight from the soundboard. So you didn't mm. you didn't get any of the audience. You just heard it, it's just so it's just raw audio basically. Just raw audio, no oomph to it. Right. Just it sucked. It's garbage. Yeah. Why would you include that on your CD? So Well, I you know, back back to what I was saying about bands sounding like shit when you you know, especially with the expectations we have of what they're supposed to sound like. You know, you go see a band live, and then they sound exactly like they do in the studio. Mm-hmm. My first uh, conclusion is: Are they even fucking performing? Right. Are they uh, just? Well, yeah. Are they just performing? Are they actually? Are they actually playing? You know, and and there's a lot of controversy with shit. You lip know, syncing th- and throughout the decades, lip syncing and fucking just telegraphing the movements of playing the guitar and. You know, it, it's hard to fake playing the drums. So normally, whoever's doing the drums is actually playing the drums. But... I've been fake playing for thirty years, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. You know yeah, what I'm saying, you. though. Yeah, but, yeah, I've witnessed. Like, but then it's like <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to just jump to the negative and say that they're not doing it. Maybe they're, maybe they're just that talented that they sound that when they record their music, they don't have to doctor it up at all. Yeah. You know, so it, it's just. I well, love going it, to concerts, and I you, love you going play to something shows. enough too. I mean, I mean, you know, arguments can be made for like something off a brand new album, right? But when you when you've got songs that you've done and done and done, especially like you look at like Metallica, that's right? You know, forty right. years of music, um, they should be able to do that shit in their sleep, right, exactly. Even being you, almost sixty year old dudes, and, and you're not gonna like you'll, you'll play like and nobody notices, but you'll play like one or two different notes, especially on a drum. You'll play a fill different than you did on the album, mm-hmm. but you know there's that one asshole that's like, "Hey, no, that's not right." You didn't, you know, they didn't shut up. It's live, the- exactly, right. <laughs> exactly. En- enjoy a live experience, not a stu- not a fucking. You, you just pop your well, CD and, and, that, and experience. That, that begs mm-hmm. the question: Do you go to a concert for the experience, or do you and and the performance, or do you, do you go to the concert just to listen to the music? Because I think as expensive as concert tickets are now, if you're going to the concert to just listen to the music. Pay ten dollars a month for Spotify and listen to it on your phone. Yeah, no yeah. shit. Yeah. If you're going for the experience and the performance, definitely buy the concert ticket yeah. to go. You know, because especially where we are, we are in a bad fucking location for concerts. <laughs> Every major band that I've ever been interested in, if I lived where I my family's from in California, I could have saw every single show. Every one. Half of them for free. Oh, nice. Half of well, them for free, but because we live in shithole fucking Midwest, it's it's very fucking segmented mm-hmm. and, and and fractured because no one wants to go through the Midwest in the winter in the winter time because the weather's shitty and the people are all assholes. Nobody wants to go to Chicago because who's to say that their bus doesn't get attacked by crackheads and fucking <laughs> everybody get raped to death? You know, it happens. Um, well, that, that show we went to uh, North End, what, North, End, North End Pub, or is it now? It's uh-huh. North End Pub. Now. North End Pub now. Well, anyway, when we went and saw you, Red Raptors, they were in Chicago the night before and had all that shit stolen before they came yep. out and played in Lafayette. So, so yep. But the, go the, fucking figure. The <laughs> problem is, you know, Chicago is one of the biggest population centers in the U.S. So, if you're if you're a musician trying to make money and you're mm-hmm. popular, you kind of have to hit Chicago no matter what. Oh yeah. But. I, I don't know. It just the music in, music industry as a whole kind of pisses me off, just because, like I said, I, half of at least half of the shows I could have had the opportunity to see would have been free. And you know, I'm a big Temple of the Dog guy. And before Chris Cornell passed away, they did a uh, like a four show like mini tour mm-hmm. in California only. 
I didn't. I've I've never in my life had the opportunity to see Temple of the Dog, but I could have if I lived in California. Didn't like Tom Morello and Les Claypool did some shit like that way back, and it was only on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing about System that. System of a Down's been doing it. Yep. Last well, couple years. Pisses me off. I just want to go see it so bad. You know, it kind of makes sense because they're the fucking West Coast. You know, most especially from the fucking grunge age. You know, Pearl Jam, Sis, or not System of a Down, Soundgarden. <laughs> yeah. Um, those are all bands that came out of the west coast yeah so it makes sense to play more shows where you're from than it does everywhere else true but it's just it's aggravating especially you know when you have the money it's like uh two years ago a friend of mine and i or two friends of mine and i wanted to go see tool they announced a fucking tour they're gonna be in chicago that was one of their first tour dates i i had that i had that day off and i was sitting on my computer with the button over the purchase tickets. <laughs> and as soon as those tickets went live, they were sold out. Shit. As soon as that time, <laughs> it said five, four, three, two, one. And as soon as it hit one, I fucking clicked purchase tickets and they were already sold out. And we wonder why ticket prices are so expensive and people wonder why Pearl Jam boycotted Ticketmaster for so many years uh, because you have ticket brokers all across the U.S. that are limited in the amount of tickets that they can purchase but if i'm a ticket broker and you're a guy that i know you're not that ticket broker so i can give you capital to purchase 500 tickets when i purchase 500 tickets and joe's my other ticket broker buddy and he buys 500 tickets well there's you know 1500 tickets that nobody gets and then i drive the cost up so the service gets their money i get my money and then there's all the fee bullshit Mm-hmm. So, uh, did you guys see what Nine Inch Nails did? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, they recently said that the tickets for their upcoming tour will only be sold day of the show at the venue. That's cool. Huh. To stop exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Nice. But, you know, it, good it, on them. It, yeah, good on them yeah, for no sure. Shit. I mean, yeah. you know, ever. Trent Reznor's the man. Anybody that's a Pearl Jam fan knows why Pearl Jam has suffered the last. Maybe not now, but definitely mid to late 90s, early 2000s. They really suffered because, you know, they did that show overseas. That guy died. He got fucking trampled to death. And then Eddie... It's all part group, of the experience. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, we, all t- we all take... That's part of it. Millions though. of people die at death clock shows. We, 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 t- <laughs> we run the risk of, of doing that shit because... I mean, look at uh, look at the state fair when a fucking tornado knocked right. the stage down and killed all those people. Right? Yeah, you, that was you nuts. You can't prepare for any of that shit, so it, <laughs> it's kind of up to you to protect yourself in whatever way. But they come back to the states and and Ticketmaster's really fucking putting yeah, the arm on them, and they're like, you know take. what? We 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 just a guy fucking died at our show, and you guys don't give a shit. You know, we're done. We're not doing anything affiliated with Ticketmaster, and it really hurt their career. You know, for a long time, they're they're back on good terms now. But I don't know, just the music industry as a whole pisses me off. It does. What it doesn't does. piss you off. Um, what does not piss me off? Yes. Um, really big paychecks. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. Um, but the, even even the really big paychecks could possibly piss you off could, because could because of deductions from those paychecks. Yeah. Yeah, the government. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck it. There, I just ruined something for you. No, nah, you didn't, because really big pay- paychecks still make me happy. Yeah, right. Money, um, mm. money is nice. Things that don't piss me off: not going to work, um, really good food, <laughs> which you didn't eat last night. Which I didn't eat last night. Really good beer, sex. <laughs> um, good point. Except for when your wife breaks your dick. Yeah, except when your <laughs> wife breaks my dick. Um. <laughs> What else doesn't piss me off? There's not. There's honestly not a whole lot that doesn't piss me off. I piss you off daily. Um, I love it. No, you don't. You you ought to, I act like you piss me off a lot, but your you. Daughter. Or does he piss no, you she off? pisses me off. You're a, you're a parent. You know, fucking yes. your kids piss you off. Um, <laughs> your kids piss me off, and they're not even my kids. Um, it's just it's the extension. It's just how it is. Listen you know? to that. Just you wait. Like thirty four um, years. I've I've waited. I'm done. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean just wait until you move in. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Good, point. Um, Good point. Good <laughs> point. 
Oh, that's funny. Really good books. Really good books. Really good books. I have some books that you can... And Killing Terrorist. Have you actually ever killed a terrorist? Yourself? You know, I can't. I'm not at liberty to say. Oh, okay. Plead the fifth. I am not going to self-incriminate. I plead the fifth. Mm. <laughs> um, I have books in there that you can check out, and if there's any you want to read. He doesn't want your dirty magazines. But remember, bad books piss me off, so... I got good books in there. I oh, don't okay. know if they're good, because only I know if they're good. And if I say that they're bad, they're bad. To you. But this isn't about you. This is about me. Yes. What are the things I know, that but I have Tyler suggestions. So. He always tries to make it about himself. I, know, I have suggestions. I, I knew we <laughs> and it's confirmed over here. <laughs> the solar system revolves around Blaine. <laughs> it does. Anyway, my yes. short topic turned into a really long topic. That's okay. That's We've got, okay. More, music. We've got mm. more music. We're talk. only 30 minutes in. Yeah. I, so I, it's all right. We've mm. got, well, I've talked a lot. You guys have just been sitting gawking at me. I know. At me like a piece of meat. Joe's been sexually harassing me all day. He wishes. You were nowhere to fucking protect me. I'm Not that sorry. I need your protection because I'm, I'm sorry. the dominant. But As I say, you're usually jumping to his defense. Right. Yeah, I, I do jump to your defense a lot. <laughs> And I don't, I don't feel like you. you appreciate me enough for <laughs> I do. that. I, of course I do. But I, that, again, wow, look at I don't that feel sincere like you look on his face. Do you but, feel it, Tyler? Yeah, I don't think no. he does. So, uh, I had to step Joe and I were working together yesterday, which here lately especially we don't get to do very much. Nope. Um, and he said, you know, if you were going to put together a band oh, yes. of any musician in history, and my first question Dream was, list. is it a three-piece or is it a five-piece? Because if you if you're gonna narrow that down to three people, that's really yeah, that's fucking tough. Yeah, that's rough. You know, that's <clears throat> really fucking tough. So I said, let's do a five piece. And my group was um, Freddie Mercury on vocals. Yes. Uh, Tim Comerford on bass. Uh, Travis Parker on, or Travis Barker on drums. Uh, Tom Morello on. See, and, and Joe kind of gave me the same face. Travis Barker's obviously not the best drummer in the world, but he's he's got a stage presence that not many people have, and he was really popular in the 90s and early 2000s. You know, he was a big-time celebrity. Oh. I like Travis Barker. He's not a bad dude. Well, he's not uh, bad, but he's not. He's not a bad dude. And then um, He's not the drummer everybody makes him out to be. No, that is my problem. He's not, but that, but I, but I stated that when I picked him. Uh, nothing yeah. against him, but he's more famous just for speed. I mean, like not. Yeah, I mean, that's why I said he's got a niche thing. Yeah, so that's why I threw him okay. in there. I got you. I mean, it's um, your pick. I'm not gonna say you're wrong, but you're so, wrong. <laughs> that was four, right? Tom, Eddie. Yeah, you're a rhythm guitarist. Tim. I said Tom. Tom Morello. Oh, oh, and then Eddie Van Halen. That's the you. fifth. Eddie, okay. Eddie, Eddie is okay. lead guitar. That was my five. And then Joe's was Portnoy. I had Mike. Yeah, that was obvious. I mean, that was you got. I mean, say come that on, I got, I got a hard on for Mike Portnoy. Everybody knows that. That's understandable. Uh, <laughs> I got a hard on for Chris Cornell. So. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, no, yeah, Mike Portnoy. I mean, obviously an awesome prog drummer. I mean, about the best there is. Yeah. Um, Tony Levin on bass. Tony's played with. Well, shit, he's actually played with Mike. They played in. Uh, Liquid tension experiment, mm -hmm. but I mean he's played with the who's who of anybody. You know, he's been the top bass player for anybody. Um, who else did I have? I had, you know, obviously Clapton on guitar, as well as Stevie Ray Vaughan. And that, uh, that that would be a hell of a fucking combination. Clapton and mm -hmm. Stevie together. And I had David Bowie for vocals. Which I I was really surprised that you picked Bowie because not a lot of people would pick Bowie. Would. But that's such a fucking unique choice. I mm -hmm. really dug. I really dug that fucking combination. It's it is odd because I mean with with Mike you obviously have you know have all the metal and the prog and all that crap. Tony can play just about anything. He's you know, King Crimson, uh, Peter Gabriel, Paul Simon, right? Phil Collins. He, you know, and then but with Clapton and Stevie, this Stevie's you know country kind of bluesy, uh, classic rock. The same thing with Eric Clapton. But then Bowie, then there's that pop mm -hmm. feature. So. Well, and the thing about Clapton, too, there's not a thing that man can't do with a guitar. Oh, no. He can play with anybody. He can outplay just about anybody. Maybe not in speed. Stevie's definitely going to be able to play a lot more tricky stuff, a lot faster. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're if you're going to get into some bluesy, fucking really hitting hard shit, Clapton's going to outdo anybody. But, and Bowie was, he was the easiest. He, he was my first choice, I think. Mm -hmm. But, like, the guitars, 
That was really pissing me off because with the stipulation also. We oh, couldn't I pick, have the hardest time picking a guitarist right now. We could, well, we also couldn't pick two guys from the same group, which I guess I cheated a little bit with Tony Levin because he has played. But he's played with so many people, though. Um, but, yeah, guitarist, dude. I mean, my my first switch was going to be John Petrucci, but obviously playing a dream. Team yeah. Mike, I'm like, well, shit, I can't do that. Uh, then I went, I went to Steve Vai. I'm like, well, that's kind of an automatic kind of same as, like, Eddie Van Halen asking like when Roth tried to out Van Halen, Van Halen. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's always those guys, the Satriani's, the Vi's and all mm-hmm. that. And, but eh, I don't know. I, I, I dig it. So, so Joe and I agreed that when we came on the show tonight, we would pick another five. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a so bitch. while you're thinking about your initial five, I've already got my five. Oh, Go for it. I, I mean, I got a pretty yet. good lineup so far. So um, I would have Flea on bass. Okay. Slapping the fuck out of that thing. Um, Brad Wilk, who is Rage Against, former Rage Against the Machine, Audio Slave. Um, uh, Zach Wild on guitar. Big Zach Wild fan. Yeah. Um, so if let me ask you this, Joe, since you made the stipulation of not picking people from the same band, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we already have one from Nate Phillips. Do we really? Yeah. Um, since uh, Brad Wilk and Zach De La Roca were in Rage Against the Machine together, but I'm putting Brad Wilk as Audio Slave, can I also pick Zach De La Roca? Well, I mean, like I said, I, I had Tony Levin, and he's played. Yeah, sure, yeah. why not? So I would have. So I've got my drummer, I've got my lead guitar, I've got my uh, bassist, and then I would have Zach De La Roca on backup vocals, and then I wouldn't have another guitar, and then I would have um, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden on lead vocals. That's my five. Okay. Uh, before I say anything about, because I'm still picking people, <laughs> um, but and I think I'm I'm gonna pick them as I say them out loud. That's fine. So, uh, Nate Phillips says Neil Peart on drums, Ooh. Cliff Burton on bass, David Bowie on vocals, Aha. Dimebag Daryl on guitar. Yeah, that, that's nice, a good one. nice. Ace Freely on guitar. Yeah, I I went on the way over here. I was thinking about who I was gonna pick, and I was like. Man, do I pick Zach or do I pick fucking Dimebag? Right. You know, just out of respect. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. But if I had if I had to choose between <clears throat> listening to Pantera for the rest of my life and listening to all of the shit that Zach Wilde has done for the rest of my life, no disrespect to Pantera and Dimebag, I would have to pick the Zach Wilde shit just because there's so much more. There is. You know, he's played with Ozzy. He's done his solo shit. Black Label Society. There's so much fucking shit that guy's done. Book of Shadows. Book of Shadows. And uh, he's got one of the most iconic fucking guitar designs yes. ever. Yes. So. Uh, let's not forget Pride and Glory as right. well. Right, thank you. Awesome shit. Mm-hmm. I love the Pride and Glory shit. All right, so. All right. Here yeah. I go. You got it? You got it? Vocals. Corey Taylor. That's a good okay, choice. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slipknot Corey Taylor or Stone Either. Sour Corey Taylor, Taylor? Because they are very different Corey. people. Uh, these days, We're yeah. We're disconnected. Oh no! Oh. Well, I'm just gonna keep it going to keep uh, dead That's air fine. from not happening. Right. Okay, so Corey Taylor vocals. Uh, doesn't matter which. I <laughs> like both. Uh, prefer- actually, uh, yeah, Slipstone. <laughs> Sto- I like that. I like Stone that. knot. So you want you want a fucking combination of the two? Stone knot. Slipstone's me. Um. Uh, let's see. For drums. I'm gonna have to go with Chris Adler from Lamb of God. Okay, that's a good choice. Yeah. Um, I'm having a hard time with bass too because I'm not thinking of like I'm not thinking I'm of a playing ability. I'm thinking more tone. Okay. But that's that's why I picked Tim Comerford yesterday. I would have to go. I I don't know his name. I think his name's Josh. <laughs> yeah. uh, what band? Just say the band. Uh, as I lay dying. Okay. I know who you're talking about. I don't know his uh, name, but I know who you're talking about. Uh, I, uh, on top of that, he doubles as backup vocals, which he's got a really high range. Um, guitar. See, now this is where I'm getting into tone. Yes, thank you. Josh hey, Gilbert. Um, I'm getting into tone and playing style. I like the bluesy playing style. I like. I, I want to say Dimebag. I want to, but I don't think I'm going to. Well, that's why when I 
went with a five piece, I picked specifically your lead guy and your backup guy. Mm -hmm. Everybody that we've chosen has the ability to do both. Yes. That made it easier for me. See, I'm I'm thinking more tone and playing style, and I I want to say Dimebag because he had like this really slutty bluesy fucking. It was dirty all. Yes, the Yes, it, it was, was completely all dirty, and I love that style. But I don't know. I think I got my five uh, on vocals. Well, here's the thing too: you have people that play multiple instruments. Mm-hmm. Um. All oh shit! You, you I can't could, pick you one. You could go them. the Foo Fighters, Nirvana, fucking. Uh, I don't remember the fucking guy's name. I talk shit about it. Dave Grohl. I'm at base. Dave Grohl. You could pick Dave Grohl and then fucking knock everything out. Uh, or you could just totally fuck my band. There we go. Never mind. No. <laughs> We're not allowed to pick each other's. You can't pick the same people and you can't pick from the same band. God. Okay. Uh, I'm. I can't pick. So I already picked Chris Adler. So I. I was gonna pick Mark Morton, the guitarist, one of the guitarists from. Lamb of God. Um, Can't do that. But nope, I already got Chris Adler. And nope. <laughs> and nope. am I? Is are these set in stone already? Or yeah, you. You've okay. Okay. Noises. Cool. Uh, so Adam Dukowitz, also known as Adam D from Killswitch Engage. Okay, that's a good choice. Oh, so another guitarist. You don't have to pick another guitarist. You can it's pick a five, five piece. You can do. It's a five piece. Yep, you could pick another vocalist. There's I don't want another words. vocalist because I already got two backup vocalists on top of my vocalist. You don't have to. <laughs> they don't have to sing ever. They will. Okay, fuck <laughs> off. Jesus. <laughs> Man, I do, I do what I want. This is my band. <laughs> oh, no, shit. So months. I got another guitarist. Who am I going to pick? James Hetfield. That's a perfect All choice. All right, sure. Why not? For rhythm, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I love his rhythms. I do too. Thanks so. for not fucking my band. So no problem. I was going, I was going with Dave Grohl. <laughs> at, at, in what spot? Vocals. Okay. okay vocals. I don't. I don't hold Dave Grohl to that high of a standard that I would put him in my band. I love Dave Grohl. I like. Yeah. But I don't want him in my band. Well, you have to give Dave Grohl a lot of respect. Oh, I do. It's hard yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. It's Nothing hard enough but respect. to learn an instrument. It's hard enough to learn an instrument and then become very successful at playing said instrument. To then learn how to sing and make people enjoy your voice mm -hmm. and your tone mm -hmm. and everything else. And then learn another fucking instrument and be really good at playing that too. I have yet to hear anybody ever say, fuck Dave Grohl. I mean, nobody doesn't like Dave Grohl. I have, I have said, fuck Dave Grohl. Um, Ouch. Just because I have a hard-on for Nirvana. Oh. Nirvana... Nirvana should definitely be in the top 100 greatest bands of all time. I have heard people say Nirvana is in the top five greatest bands of all time. And I would agree. And I disagree with that 100% because... Oh, the top 100 at least. Top 100 for sure. Maybe mm. top 50 for sure. Definitely not the top five. They, they, they did nothing in their career to do that. No. Dave Grohl has done shit in his career to do that. The band as a whole did not. So no. that's my no. hard on for Dave Grohl. Just because people, like you said, people elevate him way higher than he should be. I just but like the guy's Dave a Grohl. badass. He fucking broke <laughs> you know, his leg and played on a. Throne. He's a badass, and you know, like just his outlooks on yeah. music oh, he's and a great life. Dude. He's just a, such a great dude. He he's just gets an, he's fucking a, stoned and goes with the flow, man. He is just a giant inspiration for f future musicians, for he's a, he's, musicians he's, in general. He's the definition of a grassroots guy. Yeah. Fucking play in your garage. Learn to do shit on your own. Don't fucking pay for lessons from people that don't really want to teach you. Uh -oh. Just fucking go on this journey yourself. I'm off my soapbox. Finish your band, Joe. Yeah, no, I, I was looking up a name. I, I had it and I lost it. Um, all right, so rhythm guitar. I'm going to go with Paul Gilbert. That's a good one. I'll go with Paul Gilbert. Um, lead guitar, I mean, I, <laughs> it's tough. It's really, really tough because... Uh, fucking A. Um, you could also set it up where you have... Both people play in rhythm. And well, rhythm. either I'm just two you know? guitarists is that's the tough part for me. Um, like I said, Paul Gilbert. Nobody's um, picked Jimmy Page, which I was fucking. Well, I that's I was that one to be off the list. I was right thinking away. I was thinking Jimmy Page. I'm not gonna lie. Nobody's picked. I thought uh, him earlier. I was gonna go Paul Gilbert, and I was gonna go Randy Rhodes. Ooh, that's a good Ooh, one. I like um, drumming. I was gonna go. It's kind of you. You went flea. And it was kind of funny because I'm thinking Chad Smith. That's a good choice. Um, I'm a big Chad Smith guy. Now, my original bass, I'm not picking. Uh, I switched. I guess that's why I'm looking at my 
looking up my other my bassist. Uh, bass originally I was gonna do Duff McKeegan from. That's a good Guns choice. Roses. McKeegan. McKeegan. I said McKeegan, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I'm, I my apologies. Um, but I'm going with. Hang on. <laughs> Nobody's picked Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. He, we we more he's like, we, yeah. We, we haven't picked Obviously. two of the greatest guitarists of all time. Oh man. Two of the not two the two. The two. This is not helping me. My opinion, Eddie Van Halen is the greatest guy to ever pick up a guitar. He's up there. That's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's you know. Jimmy that's good. Hendrix bass, and bass, bass. Jimmy Page are definitely in the top five. Oh, okay. Here we go. Steve Harris for bass. Oh, that's a good choice. Okay. That's Iron Maiden. Yep. Hell, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I that's mean, like, some have, heritage. You, have you ever? <laughs> that's like, some. That's some uh, royal heritage. Well, have yeah, you seen? Yeah. That's some, some fucking. That, some of the shit that he can just. Oh my fucking lord! Even if he's just on one note for most of the song, but it's like, you know, like that's what was I struggle. I was struggling with him, Duff McKagan, or John Myung of Dream Theater because those are, you know, the thing. About, the thing about Iron Maiden and anybody is they're awesome. Well, yeah, <laughs> but you know, we're sitting here trying to pick to make these bands out of five iconic musicians through history. Hmm. I could have just picked Iron Maiden. And then all together. <laughs> all together. Just picked Iron Maiden. Like, that's all I need. Mm -hmm. Because Iron Maiden is one of the most iconic bands of all time. They have to be in the top greatest or top ten greatest bands of all time in the conversation no matter what. Look at their longevity and their ability as musicians and how they've carried a fan base through the fucking ages. How can you not talk about Iron Maiden? Yeah. Yeah, you're They're right. They're still fucking kicking out music that's badass. So, I mean, I mean the only reason I picked Randy, like I've I've been a huge. You're wearing an Aussie uh, shirt. Well, I, yeah, oh, fuck, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't even think <laughs> you're wearing a fucking Aussie shirt. You're gonna pick Randy. No, I get I mean, it. Yeah, I understand. I, shit, when I was in high school, man, I I, I, I listened to so much Aussie, and oh, I did too. Well, yeah. So I mean, it was all fuck. about it was about Zach and Randy, man. It was you know. And then and maybe that other guy, that that other guy that was somewhere in there. The other gay. Yeah, the, the, gay. the other guy or two, because I know Gus G. Mm -hmm. uh, he played. He was on uh, from 2010 forward. Yeah, and, I graduated in 2003, there, bud. So that was. I what? He is. He is uh, pointing talking, out the fact that high he listened school. to Ozzy specifically high in high school, school. or oh, mostly in high okay. school. Oh, okay. I was gonna say it's like I'm cool, but after, I'm talking about like his entire school, career. I know. After high school, he <laughs> kind of fell off Ozzy okay. for a little bit. I like Scream. That was a, that, nobody else likes that album. Exactly. I like, it. I like that album. See, I'm, yeah. the way the thing about Black Ozzy, Rain, I didn't like. I, I oh like, yeah, I like mm. Ozzy almost entirely out of respect because a lot of the music that I enjoy now, especially as an adult, um, you know, I I grew up in a less than ideal situation, and it would be two or three o'clock in the morning, and I had to be up for school in a couple hours. And my mom was blasted fucking drunk in the living room with the huge sound system we had with fucking multiple receivers and fucking <laughs> tower speakers that yeah. were as tall as me fucking cranking Howl at the Moon at fucking 3 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I, it got to the point where wait, wait, I wait, either... Wait, 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 sorry, correction. It's uh, Bark at the bark Moon. At the you moon. knew what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, it was correct, yeah. It got to the point where I either enjoyed listening to the music so I could fall asleep or I just didn't get sleep. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I had to make a choice. Fucking die of sleep deprivation or enjoy this music, which at first I didn't like. You know? So. Bark of the Moon, though. Like, I had to correct you. It's like, that's one of my favorite. Oh, that, that, it's a good song. Yeah, I'm, song, I'm glad you did correct me because. Bark of the Moon, No More Tears. I mean, they, 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 well, actually, just. I love Randy's part. In that whole mm -hmm. Randy's part things. in Bark at the Moon is just. Mm, yeah. That, that riff. But I, I, I have gotten so pissed off so many times trying to learn No More Tears on my bass. Because every so often it has that extra little, you know, like, boom, 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 boom. It, it, it like skips a beat. I'm yeah. Like, Fuck, you know, it fucks with you because you can't do the same rep repetition. Like, keep repeating that same fucking rhythm all mm -hmm. over again. And then when everything else do you think that's Do it. you think they did that on purpose or is it just another shitty bass player <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't know how to play? <laughs> Wait, should we show Joe the sticker? You got a sticker? Oh, yeah. We got a sticker for you, you pal. Oh, no. Go check his Lenny. Oh, what's that? Another Rule number two. Your bass player is a useless cunt. 
<laughs> I am so glad didn't I'm not you, a bass player. You, didn't you give Ryan one of those? Last yes, time I too? think he left it here. That's fucking. Hilarious. Is it over there anywhere? I don't know. Just to be honest, I, I'm I'm a drummer that plays bass. Lemmy, I I'm dropped a bass Lemmy. Player, don't worry about it. Don't I'll get it later. Because stand, it'll fall. Yeah, it, I mean, it, is, it is funny how many people. Joe, don't you know, that. you just brought up Lemmy. Nobody picked Lemmy. I yeah. He could have filled vocalist or guitar for sure. Bass. Well, well, he, so could Dave. Bass guitar. Dave can play anything. Yeah. Dave Grawl. He he's not Dave just Grawl. Dave Grawl. 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 Whatever. Grawl. However, however you want to say his correcting name. people today. However you want to so say his McKagan. name. McKagan. Oh, that's true. Like, you're like yeah he 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 learned guitar. He learned drums. He learned music. He is a master of music. Yes, he is. You so, gotta respect the guy yeah. for that. Uh, so uh, you finished your band, right? Wait, what? Did you finish putting together your band? Yes. Okay. I'm done. You finished putting together your second band? Well, let's go a step further. Oh, shit. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. I don't want to think. What would you name your band? Oh, Lethargic Boner. <laughs> God damn it. You knew I was going to call that. You yeah. should have said it. <laughs> He's loved it. I came up with that I name. I love that like, name. We're like, going we're gonna to do that. I came up with it a couple of years ago, and he loved it ever since. And yeah, we're using that lethargic boner. Is that going to be our band name when I learn yes. to play bass? Yes. You better be you using that bass. I haven't had a chance to Phil practice, Day. you fuck. Ooh. Yes, what? learn to play before Phil Day and you play at Phil Day. I don't want to play. I don't play. think we have enough time. We have a month. Yeah. yeah. Do it. I can't, oh learn, my. I can't learn to fucking play bass in a month. Dude, Dude are you kidding me? He also like, doesn't have, have gear. You see, have you listened to... Uh, he doesn't have gear. Have you listened to... <laughs> No, we got. Have you listened to Rob him? Zombie's yeah. bassist and fucker plays one note the whole goddamn song? Yeah. Come on, <laughs> I can I can show you like three notes in your set. We got three weeks to do this. There's no, we don't have time. Oh, I could do backup vocals too. I want to do backup vocals. We we we, we have three like weeks. This isn't gonna happen. Oh, as much as I on. want it to happen. Totally don't happen. be a pussy. You could at least go out there and try to entertain. Okay, I want just because your face looks like wanna, a dirty hairy I vagina. Don't be one. Story so. In eighth grade, my friend Jacob Kerwick and I are like, you know what? We want to get a band together for the talent show. It's the end of the year at Southwestern. We want to get this uh, band <laughs> together for a talent show. I was trying to teach myself to play guitar. That's and I was easy. like, man, we really need somebody who can play bass. So my friend Jacob was an aspiring guitar player. He was really good for our age group. I was like, you know what, man? You play guitar. I will take my guitar that I have. And I'll just play the low notes, you know. I'll just fucking dick around basically because I'm I'm not center stage, you know. And I was like, we need a vocalist, we need a front man. Who do we get? Nick Maxson himself. Oh shit! Yeah, oh, Nick, Nick Maxson was our our vocalist, and we had our, my good friend Joe Butera on drums. Phenomenal fucking drum player. Phenomenal. Phenomenal fucking. <laughs> He's drum just a regular player. gay. Phenomenal. But. Um, <laughs> So, our band name was called GIF, and I don't remember what the fuck the whole thing was. Did GIFs even exist? But it was then? like, girl, GIF guy, Gimp. something, something. So I wore a fucking dress. Like this weird, like, fucking 19... Uh. Like, 1908 <laughs> dress. Yeah. And fucking Nick was all AFI emoed out. And nobody has a picture of this. No one has a picture of this. Damn it. I made sure of that. <laughs> um, but so I basically just strummed the top two fucking strings or picked the top two strings. I basically didn't do anything. I had no fucking idea what I was doing. But we played. Um, <laughs> this is great. We played an Audio Slave song, and Nick changed a couple of the lyrics to uh, playing Mario Kart and Donkey Kong. <laughs> And that was like the fucking capstone of the school year because <laughs> I, I just felt like such a badass. And, you know, after that, I sold I, – and I had, some, I had some nice expensive guitars and I just sold them because I lost interest in music for a long – I lost interest in trying to learn to be a musician for a long time because I can't I, – I like to sing, but I don't have the ability – I don't ha – I don't – I haven't had any coaching. So that's not I, easy. It's not easy for sure. No. And I, I have, I have such a weird tone of voice where sometimes <laughs> it's deep and then 90% of the other time it's high pitched as fuck. Like I don't have a ball sack <laughs> uh, and 
You know, I've lived so many places, it's like one day I'll talk really southern, and then some days I sound like I'm on yeah. the fucking east coast, and you know, another day it's like, yeah, bro, surfer dude, like I'm on the west coast. It's like, I'm just such a weird fucking guy. I was like, ah, I, I can't do this. So I sold all my guitars, I sold all my shit. I had some nice amps and equipment. I had all kinds of nice shit that I didn't know how to fucking use. And uh, the Sounds last like couple, Blaine. The last Wish couple, I knew you. Yeah. The last couple of years, for sure, it's like, man, I, I really want... I, I I have this hard on for learning. I try and learn something new every day. And that's awesome. You hear, yeah, you yeah. hear a lot of low, high-profile people like uh, fucking Joe Rogan talk about this shit like... And, you know, the podfather himself has the slogan, fill your minds with shit. Yeah. I have so many fucking useless facts. I could kill all three of you in this room if you let me talk for the next five hours. You would be so fucking <laughs> bored, you would gouge your eyes out. But, like, what's the what's the fastest land mammal on Earth? Elephant. Anybody? The fastest? No, the fastest. Oh, for my God. <laughs> I would have like so, my, so, I was going wow. I was about to say cheetah and then she comes in with elephant. So the fastest the fastest land mammal on earth is the cheetah. Yes. The fastest land mammal in North America <laughs> is the pronghorn antelope, which is not actually antelope at all. The closest living relative of the pronghorn <laughs> antelope is the giraffe in Africa. It has That's crazy. no other living That's animal. crazy. It has no other living relative. Why do I have this fucking information <laughs> in my head? Well, number one, I want to fling an arrow at it want to kill it. And they eat it. You that's know? fair. That's number one. But number two... Heritage. When I was a kid... Yeah, fucking heritage. I haven't yeah. heard that in a minute. <laughs> but when I was a kid, you know, all, all I did was work and fill my brain with shit. <laughs> like, the top speed of a cheetah up until, like, 2012, I think, was 77 miles an hour. Well, a cheetah at the Indianapolis Zoo... I think it was like a year old. It was it was a very young cheetah. Broke that fucking record. I think it has 79 miles an hour. How how much room do they give these fucking things to run? Oh, it doesn't take them very long at all. No. They're fucking top speed thing right now. Run yeah, than that's where it that's where it beat the oh. record. It beat the record in that. Ah. Seven, what was it? 79? 79. I think Fuck I think 79 is the number now. Yeah, but the cheetah a little kid walked up to the thing and you know normally you're not actually running against a cheetah. You're just running against Probably the like display. Oh, yeah. Well, the fucking cheetah actually ran against <laughs> the kid, and they clocked the time. It hit 79 miles an hour, and no other fucking cheetah's ever done that. That's awesome. But why do I, that need, you that, know why do I need that fucking information <laughs> in my head? Who else? Who? Why? You can get in a discussion about random shit with Tiffany. Oh, good God. Exactly. Her sister had six abortions. I bought a penis. <laughs> I oh bought a penis! Oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm always the one that gets stuck with those conversations. Not there but, yet. So anyway, back to the, the fucking <laughs> actual topic. What was uh, the actual topic? I, I want to learn... I wanted to oh, learn, yeah. I wanted to learn yeah, to play wow. instrument, and I know I'm not dexterous enough because I've injured my hand so much. Too much? Which... <laughs> Both, I have fucked my hands up. I've fucking shot one of them. I've fucking Fuck. cut myself real bad. You know... <laughs> smash the fuck out of them. Um, my hands are basically useless 90% of the time. Um, they, unless I'm jacking off. That, um, yeah, I was about, did yeah. you do that today? Did I jack off today? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, you said... We left, we left work like, and he's like... No options. He, he, we leave work and he's like, Alright, I'm gonna go jack off. And... <laughs> I just strutted away. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> so yeah, so my, my hands are so fucked up. It's like... I, I already know that I got so frustrated trying to teach myself to play guitar. I know that if I <laughs> buy a guitar, I'm going to do that again. You know, I, I don't have the attention span to teach myself guitar. And I was like, I have always had a fascination with really good bass players. Yeah. Because there's so many different ways that you can play the bass. You can slap it. You can strum it. You can just fucking finger pick it. You can... You know, there's your, all this your shit. Your girlfriend's imagining Tyler playing with himself. Yeah, I, I, I'm listening. I have a really small penis. <laughs> I can just imagine. Um, you said your hands are useless, so I'm just imagining you like struggling. To thrusting? No, no, no. I don't even jack off. I just thrust my hand. He takes his arms together. I put, I put and... my hand up against the wall and I just. This thrust is it. this is what it looks like. <laughs> yes. Like literally. Um. So anyway, I, I I was like, you know what? I'm gonna learn to play bass, and I I was talking to bass man over here. Bass man. And he's like, I I sent him. The ba I know the bass that I'm going to buy already. Pretty nice looking bass, honestly. Yes. And, and I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to I'm going to send this to him because I got some questions and I know you know he's a drummer first but he's taught himself how to play bass and yada yada and he's like you want to just borrow one of mine <laughs> like I didn't ask him to borrow it he's just like you want to borrow it sure well here's the bass and all the shit that you need <laughs> well here's a tuner like now I have now I actually have to do what I said I was going to do oh man bass so, amp all but the guitar that was right? my long drawn out thing of now I'm going to learn to play bass that's awesome but I'm actually going to I'm so happy that. I'm so happy I just got to have time you know, I, I was literally looking nuggets. for that gig bag the other day because you know I got that what's that platinum nuggets try it oh, he's not going to like it that's alright try it he might like he it you don't that. know he liked this very different it's not bad. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it's not bad. It's different. I mean, like, it's, oh, it's not bad. Yeah. It's anyway. Like a, it's like a strong Budweiser. Hmm. See that? Anyway. I'm going to make him try the pineapple jacuzzi. Now. <laughs> G- gig bag. You oh, yeah. Gig bag. No, I, uh, well, you know, as, as you know, and you know, because I've bitched about it so much, that the neck that I ordered for my guitar. You ordered a custom neck for a bass that you were building. Does not fit. Well, I was taking it to McGuire and uh, looking for my gig bag. Well, I found, I found the one that came with the bass that I bought, Sweetwater. And then I looked yeah. around and I was like, what the fuck? I've got two gig bags. Where the fuck is the other one? I looked around my house for 20 fucking minutes before I realized, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's with my bass that <laughs> I let him borrow. I let Tyler borrow it. <laughs> it was a long search. I'm like, what the fuck did I well, do with it? In your defense, we've all had long fucking weeks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, between working Saturday and all the shit that we've got going on in our So yeah, life. we had a short week last week, but it's, the short week turned into a regular, a regular week. Yeah, yeah. Cause, well, it was longer because every day was 10 hours. 10 hours. Every Separate Saturday. Plus, Saturday plus we work Saturday. Yep. We get a day off. We get a whole day off and we get started to go over again. But this time we go until Saturday mm-hmm. again yep. and we get another day off. And dude, then we have a regular week. And then Nate took that fire watch for Sunday. I looked at him and said, dude, what the fuck are you thinking? Yeah, but he's, but, he's thinking double time, but I, yeah, like, I somebody, can understand somebody that. Somebody with no kids and no fucking life. Like, that, <laughs> that is the, I mean, it, it's my spiel about working at Staley's or Tate Lyle. It's a fantastic job if you have no family, yeah. no kids, no personal life. Well, he's all got a personal do, life. Does he really have a personal life? All with he does alcohol. Is, all he does is get fucked up and go to sleep. Like, that's not a yeah, life. Yeah, that's not a life. You know? But uh, sorry about you, Nate. But yeah, I mean, not Nate Phillips. N- Nate Vanderwall. I, but, I like uh, you, Nate. Both of you. You know, if you don't have any of that shit that I just said, yeah, he has no responsibility. Working whatsoever. at Tate That's Lyle true. is fantastic because you are there. I mean, pretty the much motherfucker all fell the asleep time. the last part. Well, not the last part. Watch he did, but yeah, he fell asleep out of fire watch and got put in steps. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> uh... Is he allowed to volunteer for more? Oh, he's out of steps he's now. Out of steps he's now. yeah. All I did to get put in steps was. Go out to a strip club and you didn't make it in Monday morning. <laughs> that was smooth, wasn't it? I think that's a was that the decision. tequila incident? or That was not the tequila incident, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure your viewers know about already. I don't think I don't so. I don't know that they do. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, God. I'm pretty sure you know. Yeah. Uh, you've been with this guy long enough. You've I'm probably pretty heard sure story. I've talked about it when you were around. <laughs> Have you heard about, well, first off, they've never talked about Patron in front of you in regards to me. No, nope. oh, holy shit! Probably not. Okay, so Did your clothes fall off? Uh, drunk not, story. No, oh my god, this is gonna suck. All right, hey, I told my Edward Forty hand story oh, on this, this fucking show. Bad. Yeah, I'm proud as fuck. I'm not so proud of this. Yeah. I'm not. I'm. Oh, I'm not. I didn't just shit myself. I shit the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's the episode title. I shit. I the shit room. the room. <laughs> um, or Patron. Uh, all right. So, all right. Uh, night of drinking out with a bunch of friends out of Aces. We started there and got pretty goddamn hammered. And we just, you know, it was like six or seven of us decided it was a good idea. Let's go out the titty bar. Uh, so we go to Dander's, drink more and more and more. And uh, we had two girls sitting at our table. I was pretty well inebriated. I know better than to buy stripper shots, but I was drunk. Uh, so well, we're in Lafayette. You never know how it's going to end up. You yeah, took one of them home. Uh, home. yeah. Well, drunk drunk things happens when right. you're drunk. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I bought them like a couple shots, which was really expensive, of course. Oh, do you remember the night you spent like two hundred dollars buying me shots? <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I went not going there. Uh, no, so, you're, so you're buying these girls shots. I bought them shots, and they both talked me into a dance, which actually, no, that's not bad. So I took one out 
you know, back for a dance. Then the other one, <laughs> we we took another shot of uh, Patron, by the way. So we're back in the back room, and she's dancing up on me and shit. And then she goes, oh, God damn it. And I'm like, what? And she said, I think I spilled some Patron on my pussy. Would you lick it off for me? <laughs> And before I could say yes or no, I mean, I, God knows my response. I was drunk. And my head just poof, takes my head and shoves it in her crotch. I'm like, oh, well, I'm here. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> here with this. <laughs> but, the, the, but to which afterwards, she said, there's another room we could get by with more shit if I wanted to. And I'm like, I'm like she goes, it's only like, a, like 120 bucks. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Hell no. Fuck no. I <laughs> Jennifer puts the face palm emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, she hasn't heard that story. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Jennifer, but... you so, just heard a story. Yeah, Jennifer, I. So. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more not stories. A proud moment. There's uh, a lot of stories from that era in yes. Jim's life. No, fuck no. I ain't no, paying for sex. No. Joe's a piece of shit, but he's not a prostitute. Piece of shit. I'm not a. You well. gotta respect that enough attractive for that. Was this girl? Because I've seen the girls. In dancers. Okay, see now, a lot of the girls at dancers were girls that I went to high school with. Uh, <laughs> this one actually was Jennifer says pretty she damn has attractive. Heard the story. Luckily, so she, oh. she was pretty damn attractive. Uh, the last time I went there, there was a three hundred pound lady. Oh yeah, that's because she didn't. She can't work at Phillies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was there was a lady at oh. Phillies that had a dick. <laughs> see, that's yeah, no. That's great. There's a lady at Phillies that had a Phillies. dick. Was that your favorite? I never, I've never <laughs> been to Phillies. I've never been to Dancers. Okay, now, now, actually, a funny story about Dancers, though. I've uh, only been to the Hugger in Kokomo. Uh, amateur night. Oh my God, amateur night. Oh, there was oh, there was a massive woman that got on one of the stages, and we instantly You're took. Probably there the same night. I think I know we all, uh, everybody at my table, we took our chairs and turned them around so our backs to that stage. I'm sorry, but I didn't want to. I started to see what was the coming attraction. Um, nice, Joe. And <laughs> the coming attraction. I, uh, but then this guy stumbles up, walks past us, and he's going up to that stage. And I'm thinking, like, what the fuck is this guy going to do? You know, like, no, come on now. So we actually kind of, I kind of started, we turned around and started watching the other stage. And he takes money out. And I'm like, what the fuck? He starts throwing money at her, right? And I'm like, and then he yells, put it back on. <laughs> Put your clothes back oh, on! Oh shit! And she got pissed. Grabs her clothes up, takes the money out. She goes up to one of the bouncers, starts bitching, and he just looks at her. He goes, "The fuck you want me to do about it?" She didn't nice. work there. She could have demolished him. <laughs> well, okay, so let me. She could have mauled you, him. You guys, this question: We've all been to strip clubs once. That, that doesn't matter. We've yeah, all well, been to yeah, strip well. clubs. Uh -uh. What do you think proper strip club etiquette is? Are you guys sitting down in Burr Row? Are you are you like mid room at a table? I was mid room. Okay, what what are you thinking, Joe? Are you hanging out in her bro? I'm hit and miss. Depends on the night and how drunk. Well, okay, so so say <laughs> so say say you say you go to the titty bar with like five of your best friends. Yeah. Are you guys hitting Perv Row straight away? Nah, are you we'll, grabbing a table. We'll grab a table. And then like two or three of you at a time going to Perv Row. Yeah, like we'll grab it. Last honestly, the last few times I've been there was just for the cheap pitcher of beer. Like, I don't blame you. I mean, it was, if, it was if I'm going to drink pitchers of beer, I want fucking cheap as shit pitchers of oh, beer. Yeah, it was like three bucks for like Bush Light. I either want a fucking pitcher or a fucking bucket, and I want them cheap as shit. Yeah. I mean, not like you drink enough, then you're going to end up <laughs> in a row for a minute. But... Right, you're going to end up there one way or another. No, I I'll, I'll seek out a table like going first. It's just baseball games or concerts. I'm not going to pay $9 for a beer. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, Jesus. I've, sp I've, no. paid, uh, I've bought a lot of fucking $9 beer. But you know, if I if I have the opportunity to get a fucking pitcher of beer for like two fifty, fuck yeah, I don't give a shit what it is. Well, shit, like I had as a friend. Long as long as it's not Keystone, I'm gonna fucking drink it. I had a friend went to Great American Ballpark. His wife and two kids. Right? They bought. He bought four drinks, two pretzels, uh, you two nachos, me, and four hot I was dogs. Say, didn't you tell me he bought like two nachos and a two nachos, hot dogs. two pretzels, four hot dogs, four drinks, ninety dollars. Yep. Fuck that. So. I don't normally talk about sports a lot on the podcast, but the you last it work. the yes. last year and a half, um, uh, major league ballparks, uh, I think six ballparks got together, and they're trying to sway everybody else. They said we are losing fans just because of how expensive our concessions are. Yeah, no shit. You know, 
the biggest problem with baseball fans is we don't want to watch a game that takes nine hours. There's no reason a baseball game should take nine fucking hours. No. So, but there's uh, still those classic ball fields where people sit all day, though. Right, no a doubt, few. no doubt for sure. But I mean, old people. No, I'll go to. I want to go to Fenway. I I'll go to Fenway. I want to go to Great Market I've Ballpark. I've been to the outside of Fenway. I've never actually watched a game in Fenway. So, but the point is, baseball fans as a whole want the games to be shorter, and mm-hmm. a lot of us don't want there to be as many games a year. So we're losing fans because of the concessions. There's already almost this boycott for Major League Baseball. And it's like, what are we as owners of a team, what are we going to do to get fans interested in the game again? Well, we might not be able to spur interest in the game, but we can give people incentive to go to the ballpark if we lower our prices on concessions to match minor league ballpark maximums. So if you go to Victory Field in Indianapolis, you buy a hot dog for like two bucks. You get a beer for maybe... Obviously, beer is still beer price, so you're going to pay like $7 for a beer. But seven is a lot. I have paid $15 for a fucking Budweiser at a ballpark. That's ridiculous. You know? Mm-hmm. You should not pay $15 for a fucking beer that, that costs like a dollar and ten cents. <laughs> I mean, realistically, you should not. Like that beer I bought in Wingate. Yeah. The fucking <laughs> white can generic, black. generic no. white can that just says beer. Beer. Yeah, but, I, uh, I made it. You know, I like Budweiser, don't get me wrong, but if you're paying more than six bucks for a Budweiser, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Well, when you're in there, I've they have it. you by the balls anyway, and if you really want a beer bad enough. Right. You know, so, I mean, that, that's my sports spiel. I won't go uh, any further into that. I, w- I want to thank Miranda and Cameron for the little, what just happened on the Heritage Rage uh Somebody's talking in Andy's headphones. <laughs> oh. um, but no, we have a Heritage Rage uh, Snapchat group, and Miranda and Cameron have been going back and forth on it. I've just been ignoring it. Um, I, I have mine on mute. Wife. I have mine on cool mute, enough. so like I just happen to see it, and I'm just, it's just, he's, she's just taking pictures of all of our legs and sending. Right? Yeah, Cameron sent his tree trunk fucking calves. Down syndrome legs. <laughs> his down oh syndrome God. legs. <laughs> uh, speaking of Cameron and titty bars. Oh uh, yeah, that, that's that's the big news of the week. Uh, Blaine and I are going to take Cameron out for his 20, 21st birthday. Twenty one birthday. Twenty one birthday. <laughs> And uh, we're gonna take him to a titty bar. I have to go because the thing won't press the time. Why do you need to go to it? A... Okay, Miranda, I'm gonna hand. That you the makes mic sense after... because Miranda, I'm gonna hand you the mic after I ask you this question, or Blaine can do it. Um, what is a lot of females' obsession with going to the titty bar with guys? Um, I or, don't... or or just groups or, 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 of girls or... going to the titty bar. Well, I don't can't answer for other women, but I like girls, so I like titties too. So I like to go enjoy titties. All right. Chances are, I went there all the time to drink their sex on the beach. But yeah, I don't know. I like to go too. It's entertaining. I, mean, I like titties, but it's awesome a- answer from an awesome girl. So <laughs> plus, awesome gal. I mean, awesome gal. I mean, if you've noticed, we're gays and she's what a gal. She's she's, she's so just a dynamite a girl, gal. If you bring a girl with you, you tend to get more no, attention. That's a lie. Bull, not my experience. What girl did you bring with you? Because most girls at a strip club kind of ignore the table if you bring a girl with you. Hitchhiker, actually, they hate girl on girl. Yes. I know, that's why they nobody do. likes to go there. Uh, chances are, though, when they were still around, I used to go there, obviously, before I had kids, all the time. And <laughs> it, to the point where the DJ knew who I was, and he'd be like, you can't go on stage. There's those girls that do like having the girls on stage with them because then that gets them more money, but... I should, I'll see a shit ton of guys throw money at the chick to mess with their girlfriend. I mean, that shit. Yeah. A yeah. lot. I, I never went out of like, I'm going to go watch what you do. Gonna... Well, I, don't, I, I just, I, w- I would never think to even ask Skylar to go to a strip club. Okay. Number one, I, I, I don't go to a strip club ever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been years <laughs> since I've been to a strip club. <laughs> um, Wish I could say that. Well, I mean... The last time I was in a strip club, the last time I was in a strip club, I watched my first bar brawl. Blaine, your girlfriend's playing footsie with me in here. So, so there's a, 
there's a bar in uh, Iowa. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it on the show before, but it's called the Lumberyard. And the slogan of this bar is where real men go to get wood. It's the number one strip club in Iowa. <laughs> and we took a group of underage kids into the strip club. What the fuck? It's 18. Oh. It's 18, and it's bring your own beer. The strip club is bring your own beer. That sounds so like a... When I was walking into the strip club, like eight nine o'clock at night, there was literally people wheeling in kegs, <laughs> like oh. on little fucking dolly carts. I'm not fucking shitting you. So anybody that lives in the fucking Iowa in the lumberyard, fucking shout out to you because you guys have got something going on there. But it's not illegal. No, it's not illegal. <laughs> so anyway, it's bring your own beer at the strip club. They have like seven stages, and they, they. I'm step, moving to Iowa. They step down, <laughs> so girls will start all the way at the top and work their way down all the way to the bottom stage. And when she gets to the bottom stage, there's already a girl on the next stage up top. But they have a shower room, so you you give a stripper like fifty bucks, she'll grab one of your people at your fucking table, drag them into the fucking shower with like three other strippers, and just fucking drench them. I Titties am moving to Iowa fucking once again. Strippers are flying everywhere. <laughs> fucking dicks are almost coming out. It's fucking, it's crazy. But the 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 one and only time I've been to the Miranda, do you want to go to Iowa? Des Moines is a fucking Road shithole. trip. Des Moines is a shithole. You will get fucking stabbed. You have to be careful in Des Moines. But, um, <laughs> so, we're at a hog show. The World Pork Expo. And I, and I thought that was another strip club heritage. name. No, no, no. World Pork Expo. I used to be involved For in livestock. <laughs> Hashtag so heritage. We, we've got like uh, four or five uh, 18-year-old kids with us. So 10-year 4 hers not adults yet. Myself and the other two guys that went with me to take our livestock up there. Um, we're like, man, let's go to the fucking titty bar. And we looked this place up on the way up there. Like, what's the best strip club in Iowa? We were going to drive hours to a fucking titty bar, because we were going to the fucking strip club. <laughs> but so I, we walk in, we've got all these kids with us, uh-uh. there's people fucking dollying in kegs, and we sit down maybe two rows back from Perv Row, and there's a guy, or a group of guys at a table, Yay. right behind fucking Perv Row, and there's a real skinny little guy. Bouncer walks up. Bouncer's probably 6'6", six, six, 260 pounds. I mean, he's a big fucking dude. And at the time, I was, you know, partly in shape. I'm a fucking thick dude. I'm not going to fuck with that guy. So he walks up, and he, and this little guy is facing the stage. The bouncer walks up behind him, taps him on the shoulder. Guy doesn't turn around. Bouncer taps him on the shoulder again. The guy turns around. What the fuck you want? <laughs> <laughs> and, and mind you, the bouncer is looking down. At this guy. This little this guy is probably <laughs> five four, maybe a hundred pounds. This guy is a little fucking dude. So it's David and fucking Goliath. Okay? <laughs> Goliath looks down at David and says, You've been in this chair for almost three fucking hours. <laughs> I've told you once already, if you don't put some money on the fucking stage, get the fuck out. Shit. Okay, so so there's <laughs> that's a, business right there. There's a fucking hell yeah. There's a pause, and little guys like <laughs> little guy, little, little guy, guys like Vern Troyer. Yeah, it's like do your do, thank you, little guy. Rest in peace. Little guy <laughs> looks up at Goliath and says, "Fuck you." <laughs> okay, so the bouncer goes <laughs> to leave. He wasn't going to start confrontation. He. Pass the message on to the guy from the manager of the club. Put some money on the stage, pay the girls, or get the fuck out. You know? They brought their own beer, so they're not making any money off the beer. So, he comes back, like, not 15 minutes later, and he taps the guy on the shoulder. He turns around right away. He says, all right, man, you haven't put any money on the stage. I gave you the opportunity. These girls are working. This is shit isn't free. Get all your fucking beer. Get your shit and get the fuck out. So the bouncer is, you know, not going to stand over top the guy. Yeah. He goes to turn and walk away. David stands up and hits fucking Goliath in the back of the head with a beer bottle. Yeah. Fucking shatters this thing. Fucking smacks this motherfucker hard enough that it shatters the beer bottle, okay? 
Goliath just turns around. <laughs> Those slow turns are always the slow best. Slow fucking turns. They turn, are always and the he best. He grabs David, the little fucker, by the neck, picks him up with one hand, and slams him down on the table, and it's a battle royale. <laughs> so we brought we brought our own beer in, and we're still in the same spot watching the stage. And the fight. And the fight. <laughs> and the cops are called. Well, my f- two friends and I have been giving these 18-year-old kids beer for like an hour and a half. Oh, shit. So they're toasted. <laughs> we got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, they, they don't know. No, they don't know. So we, <laughs> we fucking left. But we got to watch about 15 minutes of a bar fight. <laughs> oh, my God. This, I mean, okay, so after David hit Goliath with a fucking beer bottle and David went to, or Goliath went to kill David... All of David's fucking measly fucking dumbass friends jumped in to help fight Goliath. Well, Goliath's fucking brethren just came out of the woodwork. <laughs> There's fucking seven feet tall men charging across the strip <laughs> club. And it's like, I gotta get out of here. I don't want to get fucking tangled. I don't want to get my ass beat. I've been in a lot of fights in my life. I don't like getting my ass beat. I don't like getting punched in the face. That hurts. I don't like getting hit... Hit the head with inanimate objects. That fucking hurts, too. Sounds like a scene from Game of Thrones. It was kind of like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thanks for... I'm not caught up on Game of Thrones, but thanks. So... She didn't spoil anything. Yeah, she didn't. Giants giant. You already knew Giants know, were in the shut show. Up. So, no. Don't even call her out on that. Fuck yourself. But the point <laughs> is... It's like... I feel I, like I, I deserve a spoiler. I could have went to jail for that just by being there because i was i could have got mixed up in it you know the cop could have questioned the fucking 18 year old and it's like eh, i gotta get out of here <laughs> so i went i went fucking drank until like 7 30 in the morning slept for an hour and got up and started getting hammered again so. <laughs> okay Derek Smith Jr. says spoilers aren't real. Jennifer says, Jennifer called you out and says everywhere is dangerous to Tyler. Okay, Jennifer, I'm gonna call you out. Oh shit! Because I'm a world traveler. I've been all around this fucking thing called a globe, all around it. Okay. I'm Every just- place I tell Tyler to, I want to go, he says it's a shithole and I could be murdered. Okay. So the reason I be- say that. So the place that I used to live in, California... You should go to Delphi. There's legitimately people <laughs> kidnapped every day, oh my God. ransomed by the Mexican cartels. 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 See, that's what I'm saying. That's some my, fucking heritage right there. Right. My, my God. This is a heritage fucking episode. I thought my you were just man. a regular gay. I'm just a regular gay. Just... But uh, I'm a weird fucking gay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. So there's people that get kidnapped in lakes or in uh, fucking Old Town or uh, San Diego all the time. San Diego. Get fucking ransomed. The families don't pay their ransom. You know what happens to those people? They end up in a fucking 55-gallon drum full of fucking battery acid, dead. You know what their families get? Videos of them being decapitated, cut up, and put inside that 55-gallon drum. You're such a cheery gay. I'm, I'm, I'm a realist, okay? That's why I haven't taken my wife to Mexico. Because what happens in Mexico? White Americans and Canadians and Europeans... <laughs> oh, my God. ...get fucking kidnapped... Every day, because we have more ma- more money than all of Mexico put together. Joke's on them. I don't have any money. You have more money than most Mexican citizens. I have a lot of debt. That's, <laughs> that's more money than most Mexican citizens. Debt. So the problem with Mexico specifically is there's a large tourist market, number one. Well, that large tourist market is controlled not by Mexico. It's controlled by rich Canadians and rich Americans. Yeah. Okay? So what do we do when we have rich Canadians rich Americans making money off of our nation, oh, we'll kidnap them. Sounds like a good idea. Let's kidnap them. What do we do when their families don't pay or their governments don't pay? We kill them. We're not out of anything. We just killed them up, killed them and put them in a fucking barrel. Who gives a shit? Not us. We cut people's heads off on live fucking TV. Just like fucking ISIS. It's the same type of people. Maybe morally better just a tad... Yeah, they're not fanatics. They're just ah, like, we want to make money. Of, some of them are fanatics. They're fanatics for money, ah, not religion. Some of them are fat, fanatics for fucking religion. Fanatics. Really? Some of those fucking cartels get really deep into fucking Catholicism. Like, Okay, yeah. You know, it, 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 it's fucking <laughs> sketchy. But, you know, Jennifer is almost entirely calling out the fact that she's going to New Orleans for shutdown for her anniversary, which is great. Travel. I, I urge everybody to travel. Um, 
New Orleans is a dangerous place. Our nation as a whole is a dangerous place. The world as a whole is a dangerous place. Watch too many movies, B. No, it's it fucking <laughs> happens. Look it up. Watch he's, the news. He's traveled around. He's he's I've been all over the fucking world. Call he's me. He's been everywhere, you want, man. Whatever. But, he's been uh, everywhere. Joe's taking a nap. Oh, sorry. I don't right. give a shit. Sleep. But <laughs> My bad, New Orleans is a fucking dangerous place. Look at footage on the news, not even just eyewitness accounts of what was happening during Katrina. Look at the news footage from Katrina. What were people doing? They were looting. What would have happened if any of us were in a house where somebody was trying to loot it, and we said, hey, that's my stuff. We would have been dead. We would have been shot. We would have been They'd stabbed. Be like, we would have been beat to death. Do something about it. Does this make you afraid to live life? No, absolutely not. Because I'm a bad motherfucker. <laughs> However, most people aren't bad motherfuckers. I'm not. Only, I'm not. There's only, there's only I'm two, not a bad nope. motherfucker. There's only two things on this fucking planet that scare me. You want to hear what they are? Your wife? Nope. <laughs> the Dutch and carnies. Nope. Uh, uh, nope. Bees? Okay. Are you and allergic? Giraffes. Are you allergic what to bees? What the fuck? I'm, I'm highly allergic to bees. Why what about giraffes? giraffes? Let's hear this. I'm terrified of giraffes. <laughs> okay, think about it. Think about it. You have, you have like a 15 fo- fucking foot tall animal that beat each other to death with their necks. <laughs> How yes. fucked up is that? Have you ever, that's like the best thing to watch is just a fucking drift. <laughs> just fucking, they, don't even, ah! they, don't even, they don't even fucking beat each other with their heads. They beat each other with <laughs> their it. necks. I will be tagging you in a picture of a giraffe That's later. fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not like, oh my god, a giraffe. But I don't like fucking giraffes. They make me uncomfortable. I don't, I just, Honestly, yeah. They're fu- okay, I'm a very they're a short, stupid animal. I'm a, no, they're actually smart animals. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm saying they're stupid. Just, uh, they're just stupid. Yeah, I'm not saying okay. I'm not t- I'm not commenting on their intelligence. I'm saying they're like pandas. That I'm just saying this, this animal's stupid. Why would you I've make it? I've always been intimidated yeah. by horses. You're intimidated by horses. That's, I, that's a fear for when a lot I was of when I was a kid. Uh, like we went to the state fair. And Episode they, title: Drafts are stupid. We were looking at horses, and I think. Uh, I think I went to pet one. I know my mom went to pet one, and, and she they told her you know where to, and it nipped at her, and it scared the bejesus out of me. I like like because I was standing right there, you know. Horses are assholes. At? It's literally. I don't Horses trust are them. fucking assholes. But uh, no, so yeah, I, I'm legitimately afraid of giraffes. I don't like them. I don't like seeing them at the zoo. Um, <laughs> what the fuck did I just watch? They just they just make me uncomfortable. They're so tall and they're so lanky. But they can run really fucking fast. They have to be able to outrun lions and fucking cheetahs. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, I want to mention uh, a, a, a co-worker, Mr. Todd, is attempting to buy a camel. Yeah, why the fuck would you buy a Fucking hilarious. I don't know. He said he saw it He saw it on a fucking uh, Craigslist for $3,000. Someone in Lafayette is selling a camel. A bull, a breeding bull. See, camel. Todd. I mean, not Todd. Richard. I mean, I can, I can see the argument of him arguing for a camel. But Todd, Todd owns a farm. It. Oh, he does. So yeah, he's so he's into know. breeding shit. He's into he's into cattle and shit like camel? that. Yeah, so but there's no market for camels. Obviously, so, <laughs> but he's just. Said, I've, I've done he, it was just. Game. It was I just him it. talking. He was talking to us, and he's like, "Yeah, I found a Richard camel, and I'm trying to convince my wife to let me buy it." Can you imagine what Richard would do with a camel. He was like, "I, I, he <laughs> wants to have, he wants to have Cliff, a very large ginger man, very, uh, the largest, very the largest large largest of gingers. Uh, he wants to have Cliff uh, come Budget. over and ride it. Oh, <laughs> and, and he wants to for the watch. He wants, yes, exactly. He wants to charge, <laughs> oh, charge people to, twenty bucks to watch it. So, you know, and he so, would do it because Cliff does not give up. Fuck. Cliff, Cliff, Cliff came up with the idea. Oh, no, did he really? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I want to g- kind of rewind, take a step back. Um, step. The comment that I watch too many movies. Um, B. I, I, B. I, I've said this. <laughs> I've said this on almost every episode. Whenever I rant or whenever I talk a lot, which is pretty much every episode. Every. Um, if you disagree with something that I have to say, reach out to us. You know. He'll have a conversation. I, with I will you. have a conversation. I will not debate anyone, unless unless you're wrong. Well, no, I, I, not you then. Well, I, see, even <laughs> then, I'm not. I've said this on the show before. You're not going to change someone's beliefs. No, someone's no, no. beliefs are their beliefs. I can I can sway your opinion on fact. Um, I can sway your opinion on opinion. 
The problem with debate is whoever is more whoever is more convincing again. wins the debate every time. Yeah. If you and I are standing at podiums and you're spouting facts and I'm spouting facts, we could be saying the exact same shit. Whoever um, voices it more appropriately, Appropriate. more um, more pleasurably, <laughs> whoever says it in a way that more people enjoy it, they're going to win the debate. Every time. Yeah. In any fucking yeah. circumstance. Like me, I'm ter- I am absolutely terrible at debating or arguing uh, whether I'm right or wrong. Me too. So I'll lose arguments that I'm right about. So that's why I don't argue. <laughs> um, but the, re- the reason I want to kind of point this out is I've said it on every topic that I get really deep with. If you disagree with what I'm saying, reach out to us. You know, we'll talk about it. We'll discuss it because I, I'm not here to change anybody's opinions or beliefs. Because who the fuck does that? What I am, I see it. What I am here to do is try is and it? shed some light on things that what? a lot of people don't get to see. Um, Cameron said Taylor has a lot of ball sack, so I drink. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. A lot of ball sack, no dick. I'm all balls, no dick. But he's supposed to be balls deep. Blaine. He's balls, balls deep, Blaine. Balls but deep. I, I legitimately am all balls, no dick. But um, <laughs> I always say, form your own opinions. Teach yourself. Find these facts out for yourself. So I'm inviting anyone that disagrees with anything I have to say to fact check it. Fact you know, check. do your research. Figure these facts out for yourself. You know, you might see something that I don't. That I haven't seen. What the fuck? It's all about insight. You know, insight is a is a term that doesn't get thrown out thrown around enough. Um, your life experience and my life experience are totally different. Mm-hmm. You definitely have insight on things that I don't. I have no fucking idea about. I definitely have the reverse side of that. I have insight on things that you have no fucking idea about. The problem <laughs> is that. A lot of us are so, I saw. are so compelling in the things that we say, how we say them, that <laughs> our populace just believes what people say no matter what. That's why I don't like using the term debate, because it's whoever's who, whoever is more charismatic wins. Yep. So I just, I just wanted to say that. I got distracted by our group chat. Yeah, you're an idiot. Notice, notice how, notice how I set my phone over there, and I have not fucking touched. It I normally don't because I'm focused. You on know, the show. I normally don't. Hey, look, it's it's my very first time. Mine's on the while floor. I'm talking, and you're over there fucking jacking off on your phone. You're jacking off to your big ball sack. Yeah. Are you ready for me to lay into a topic? I have a topic. What is the topic that involves? It was a segue from our older topics. From the ship, the going I'm to concerts and music. For the question that I asked because you didn't give me a no! question that I asked. I want a topic. All right, go ahead. Gosh, you guys are like an old married couple. So, last week, uh, I'm the net. the best man in your guys' wedding. No fucking questions asked. Really? Yeah. Oh, he did say that the other day. <laughs> Richard is no longer uh, Richard's a of- fucking officiating. <gasps> Wait, so what happened oh, with Richard? He's retarded. Yeah, he's retarded. Think about it. Would you want Richard to officiate? He's the wedding? one that... I'm sorry. That's he's enough. the one that had the fucking idea in the first I place. I told him that was a stupid idea. No, oh, I knew not. it was I knew it was a stupid idea. Do you want idea. anyone to take you seriously? Like, come on. Like, I could understand asking me. I could understand asking him. Did he tell you who the other person was? No. The other two? Is uh, Kyle one of them? No, fuck. No, okay, so he is an ordained man. Kyle, Kyle is ordained because he got ordained for uh, oh, wow. Nikki and Carl's wedding. Uh, no, I have two options for uh, officially two options left. It should have been two barring, options. Barring period. Barring Richard. No, I th- I actually genuinely Richard thought Richard. Make it funny. That's the he, only thing I okay, would Miranda, no, your wedding no. is not supposed to be funny. It's about you two. Richard would. He'd make it, make it about him. himself. Thank yeah, you. you're right. You make a very valid point. Wait, um, I don't even Okay, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I'm going to scream into this up. microphone. I'm going to hook him up with my people when it's time, mm-hmm. so know that you will be taken care of, because I won't let this man <laughs> my people. not put a fucking rock. I have people. You I have, have people? people everywhere. I have people all everywhere. 
I won't let this man not put a fucking rock on that finger. So you need to just be patient. Let my man over here do his thing. Let me do my thing. We'll get with my people and we'll make some shit happen. It's your turn to talk again. So I have two options uh, for... A giant man in a penis suit. Either Mr. Brandon Stone... That's a good choice. That's a good choice. I feel like he would he would speak very well. Or Mr. Pod Daddy himself, Nate Phillips. That's a good choice. Because I know him better than Brandon. And Brandon's good. He would make it feel very... Nate, Nate would talk a lot. Nate, yeah, Nate would talk a lot. I love you. Uh, he would talk a lot, but I think he would make it feel very... Yes. Crazy. Imagine if I did it. I know. You're yeah. best man. You can't do both. Good <laughs> God, I could do both. I both. Um, <laughs> but I was I was having so much fun working with Jennifer yesterday and like telling Aww. you like we were talking we were talking about like like what Tyler's role in the wedding would be and I kept saying ring bear. And I thought you were saying ring bearer. Yeah, that's that's trick. I kept saying ring bear. I was gonna. He was saying I was gonna dress up in a bear costume, and I was like, "You realize, motherfucker, if, if that's the... really what you want, number one, I'll do it because you're my friend. But number two, <laughs> I'm gonna dress up as a fucking panda, <laughs> something that you fucking hate. I told that. you that yesterday. Don't I don't do remember that. that. Yeah, I didn't hear that. that. He'll be his best bitch. Uh, somebody asked me, like, I think it was. <laughs> I think Jennifer asked me, like, what Richard was gonna do if he wasn't gonna officiate. I was like, oh, he could be flower girl. So I, I told. Yeah, I know. Obviously, your okay, children are going to do that. I just want you to know that I was the proponent for your children to do yeah. ring bearer and I, flower girl. And it was so. already decided anyways via her and I. I I'm taking care of your girl. We are, we are planning just our know, wedding. You're always being taken we're not care even engaged and we're planning our wedding. So <laughs> Yeah, you got to do it when the time's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skyler and I talked about this shit before we got engaged. We have basically an entire wedding already wow. planned. At the beginning, it was so bassy, and it was like, well, he was have a, to, I was burp. I was, yeah. I was like, what the? He was burp, swallow, ejaculate. <laughs> We're going to have a really awesome wedding. And it's gonna we be are. Fun. It's going to be great. Yeah, so when you guys go to do this, let me know. I've got lots of people. I people. got people, too. Tyler will learn how to play bass. By we got, we'll we got, we all, all have people. people. It's great. It's, it's, it's honestly great. Badass people, though. Do you have caterers? Yeah. I might need some caterers. Yeah, I got caterers. I got... There, there's only one. This is a shout out to Mamma Sweet Shop, uh, Aaron Brown and family. Uh, there is no one you should choose in Lafayette to make a cake besides Mamma Sweet Shop. No question. She wants to make her own cake. Ask him what <laughs> he would be opposed to making. Where's that? Is that on? Uh... It's on Thirty Eight, right next to the old. Uh, oh it's, it's yeah, right no. next to Penn Station. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, that yeah. place is great. Um, Mamma Sweet Shop. We'll I'm telling you, it will be the best cake you have ever had. Best cake. No fucking questions asked. It's affordable. They're really good people. They're family friends of mine. Sweet. Use Mamma Sweet Shop. Well, That's all I'm our saying. Another big issue is. I have family friends as well that do the cakes. A keg. If we get a keg, what are we gonna do? We're gonna have people who like. Four fifty North is what we're doing. And we're gonna have people that don't. Obviously. Like <laughs> well, that, this is this is number one why you don't get a keg. Number two, you do a cash bar, because. Catch bar. The last thing that you want as a newly married couple is a big, well, no, is a big bill. You want a lot of drunk people. You want people to remember your experience. You don't want a bill handed to you at the end of the night. That's number one, why you plan everything a year ahead. You pay for everything a year ahead. So all you do is shit. You've heard, you've heard guys say, all I need to do is know when to show up. That's what you both need to do. Uh, your wife comments, don't make your cake. You will have so much other things to worry about. Don't add more stress. Yes. But she, but Miranda loves making cakes. She loves decorating cakes. What do cakes. you love that's more, the... though? Making cakes? Or me. Or him. Yeah, that's right. What do you love more? Yourself or making cakes? <sighs> making cakes, come on. Right. I mean, that was, that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> but uh, the, the Skylar makes... The perfect point. I get that. I you get you that. need to just uh, seriously. All you need to do is show up with your makeup done. Yes. Your dress on. But again, let's go back to the main. I need a ring on my finger. Part. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm I'm helping you. I'm I'm in your uh, court. It's already been established. I'm married. I would let you live with me if you if you wanted to. But I'm actions, saying it publicly actions, on on the air. I'm marrying you. Actions. Uh, this is it's not publicly time. on air. It's not the. It's not the time. It's a not whole the three time. people can see it. Uh, I'm not looking at the screen. I'm just. Kind of guessing. It's not. There, the time. There's no current there. viewers except for our significant others, which one is here. So. I don't have 
a significant other. I'm talking about Tyler. My dog doesn't watch the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> watch fucking You're Rocky here. being at home. He, other. Rocky! No. Rocky! He, he's at home just like, oh. like staring at a phone. Scratch just scratch at the screen. All right, so <laughs> before I get... Well, before you, before you get into your topic... Yeah. Let, let's hear about some scratchings. Oh, Jesus. It's Joe's turn to talk. Oh, again. Jesus. Yeah. Let's hear about some scratchings. Do that. We, because we... you told me this story yesterday, and I just about pissed my pants. I was laughing so hard. I don't think I've heard this okay, story. Well, Why do you think I brought Joe So, home? I get it. For some people, <laughs> scratch-off tickets are an addiction. It's like they Gambling they is definitely to, an addiction. Yeah. Right? And you always get, you know, people in line that need their the specific ones. You know, okay, I need number 10, then number 5, and 2 mm-hmm. number 1s, whatever. I need 11 number 1s, three 45s, seven 20s. Yeah. And one and a yeah. half. One now, and a half. I need half. I, I get that, you know. Uh, it drives me nuts, too, dude. I get it. it, it like, but for God's sakes, people, if, if you're going to be, if, if you're buying this shit, <laughs> Album of us, and there's like two pages dedicated to him. Like, oh, but he wouldn't look at it. No, like if you're, if you're gonna do this shit, buy your damn ticket. Either go to the other register if it's hey, closed. Hey, microphone up to Fuck mouth. Yourself. We have an audience you go that likes to, to listen to you talk. Go ahead, because he's already heard this. Go. <laughs> I love your I love your Jurassic Park tank. But no, if you're, if you're going to do your scratch offs, go to the next like closed register on the counter there. Go to your car, whatever. Don't stand there. Don't in front. stand right. Yeah, in the don't stand in the line after you buy it and scratch off to buy more. Uh, now I was telling him like it was seriously like maybe two weeks ago. There's only like maybe three of us in line, but yeah, this chick, you know, bought a couple of them. Uh, did their scratch off as after she bought them. Fuck yourself again. <laughs> yeah, as she's standing there and this, we're all waiting in line. Does the scratch offs and then uses whatever she got off that to buy, buy more. more. Yeah. And then she goes to her fucking car, which is funny because actually she came in back in later after doing her car again. I hate scratch. I hate, I hate, uh, gambling people at gas stations. Yeah. People that purchase their numbers and shit. And well, it's then, like, we have shit. We, we, normal people are usually on their way to do things when they go to a gas station. Right. Right. They're usually stopping on their way to the they're on their way to the thing that they're doing to get to a gas. They're going to yes. a gas station. And then he and I talked about this Monday. What was it? Hey, hey guys. Hey Gabe. Joe's trying to talk. No, I'm not, no. Joe's, I'm, Joe has I was the asking floor. Asking Tyler a question. I'm to be polite to you. Joe has the floor. But what was it Monday? I don't care. Monday, you and I were talking about this, right? Yes, it was yes Monday. Monday. Uh, so yeah, Monday, I hit up the gas station after work, get something to drink. And there's like five or six people in line, right? And they only have one register open, of course. Yeah. Oh, see, that's one thing I don't understand. It's it's the whole fucking Walmart complex. We have forty seven registers for Black Friday. We have three registers Monday through Friday. Fuck yourself. Yeah. Pay fucking people to keep all these fucking registers open. You know what? This is smart business. You have forty seven fucking registers. Forty seven fucking people that are trained to operate said registers. You know what people are doing if the fucking registers aren't open? They're not standing there. They're not standing there. They're not getting fucking paid to do nothing. Go back to fucking customer service. Unload all the boxes of shit that fucking people bring back. Yeah. You know what else you do? You go fucking stock the shelves. Then you don't have to pay so many people at night to come in and fucking stock the shelves. Pay fucking people to do shit. Not fucking stand around. (laughs) Don't have fucking 47 aisles fucking open or closed. Like your voice just cracked. I am am hearing the rage. I'm fucking mad. The rage. It fucking drives me nuts. Oh my god. You walk into a gas station that nobody fucking wants to go to anyway because they're all shitholes, just like most of the states in the United States. And you walk up there and it's like, man, I have to stand in line for five fucking minutes because these people are incompetent and then you can't fucking go to the other register that's not open. Rossville gas station is really Fuck! <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to not drive to clear Rossville. But... Jesus, fuck. But no, I mean, like, <laughs> no, seriously, there's, like, seriously, for? five or six people in line, like, literally, the day he and I talked about this shit, what was it, was it Monday? Monday. Yeah, sorry, Monday. The day we talked about that, I, <laughs> I stopped to get a drink, that's all I fucking had, and same shit, this lady buys, like, fucking three tickets, 
scratches them all off right there. And this guy looks, turns to look at me and goes, are you fucking serious? I'm like, I was just talking about this shit at work today. And he's like, oh, well, thanks for fucking jinking it. Thanks for that. <laughs> Some it, other Subaru it's guy fucking, had a Subaru it's shirt on. It's fucking ridiculous, but. man. It, it's just, it's an ongoing thing. You know thing. what they like, should have? They should have a fucking kiosk. Okay? A fucking. Some do. Fully, di- no, 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 listen to me. A fully digital kiosk. You oh, walk, yeah. You walk up to that kiosk. You put your money in. You punch in how much money you want to devote to gambling. So I walk up. I put my card in. It says, please enter an amount. You type in $10. Then it pulls up how many fucking choices of scratch-off tickets you have for $10. You punch that button. It prints off your tickets. Kicks your card back out. You scratch them off. You can you can do all that shit without having to fuck with anybody. Frankfurt has a vending machine for scratch off tickets. A lot a lot of people a lot of places have vending machines. Germany still has cigarette vending machines. Hmm. So the point that I'm trying to make is you're not Racking up the line. you're not bogging down the line yeah. of somebody that you're paying more than ten dollars an hour. Most gas stations pay somebody. Actually, a lot of gas stations pay people like fifteen fucking bucks an hour. That's more than what I make. Just because of the fucking people that you have to deal with. It's an operational mm-hmm. hazard that you or occupational hazard. Operational. That, the fucking people that you have to deal with. So you know, there's managers at gas stations that are making sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year just managing a gas station. I don't think I would ever want to. Oh, I definitely wouldn't either. I wouldn't want to work at a gas station. But the point that I'm trying to make is you're paying someone ten plus dollars an hour to fucking contribute to you losing money. The amount of hours that we keep employees on the clock is a direct fucking correlation with how much profit the company and the upper management people bring home. So if I'm a manager of a gas station and I keep labor below, we'll say 15%, then I get a $1,500 a quarter bonus. If I keep labor below 20%, I might get $1,200. If I keep labor at 50% or below, I might only get 500 bucks as a bonus. These are all just rough numbers thrown out, pulled out of my ass. So the... Manager says, okay, I want the biggest bonus I can get. I'm going to close this register all the time because cash is, and this is actually smart, cash is tied up in this register. I might need this cash over here in this other register, and money might get miscounted. You know, shit's going to happen. Shit always happens. It's Murphy's Law. Anything bad that can happen will happen. Anything bad that can and will happen will happen fast. So you protect yourself. Let's close one register, pay one person to man the other other register. I don't have to pay another person. Right there cuts down my labor cost. I only pay this person so many hours a day, and then I have another person come in that cuts down on my labor cost. Bam, done. I got a $1,500 bonus when I could have got 500 but all the people that are Shit. standing in line get fucked. Yeah, it's true. But I think, uh, what, what was it that brought up the that bullshit in the first place? Oh, there's a grocery shop in it. Scratching. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a grocery shop in it. Pay less. You want to hear this, Miranda? Where's she at? All right, uh, so. Uh, okay. I'll tell spe- it later. Spe- yeah, while we're waiting on her, speaking of this, like. I was at Circle K over here on uh, Veterans Memorial, 350. 350. It's three. You well, li- 350. There's a lot of people that call it Veterans Memorial. There's I don't care. Of, they're wrong. I call it's it 350. 350. I call it 350. Okay? 350 okay. South. All right. I get it. All right. I understand. If you, okay. If you look at a map, if you look at an atlas, if you look at a road atlas. It's 350. It Who looks still, at road atlases anymore? We talked about The this. signs, however, say Veterans Memorial. I don't we give a fuck about, about the signs. We talked about this on the podcast. I, like, I am a proponent for 350. Good. Let me stay at that. Anybody that doesn't know how to read an atlas is doing themselves a disservice because GPSs aren't always going to save your ass. But if you <laughs> look at a map, if you look at a road map, <laughs> it still says County Road 350. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fuck you up, Joe. You keep poking me. I'm poking the bear. You keep poking the bear, and I'm going to Jurassic Park fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. But uh, if you look at a map, it still says County Road 350. As it should. As it should. 
Now, I appreciate the sentiment of renaming that Veterans Memorial Parkway because we live in a town, a county, a state where we don't take care of our veterans. Yeah. And that's I'm going to get into that here in a little bit with my military talk, but I still call it we're running on two hours. I don't know if we're going to get to that today. Good God, I haven't got to any of my topics. Oh, my God. Next week. That's what you get for inviting a special uh, guest. So, Circle K, corner of 350, Concord. Not really a corner, cr- across but from 350. Across from Walmart. <laughs> Just go with your fucking story, Blaine. God damn. There were two people behind the counter, and only one register open. The oh, other, that, the other oh per- yeah. The other person was just chilling there. Just sticking yep. around. Yeah. yeah. In their little glass Same box. thing, Circle K and Dayton. Same yeah. fucking thing. Well, well, yeah. circle, the Circle fucking, or the, uh, the I don't know if it's the fucking... Circle K or Phillips, but the one behind Walmart on 26 on... Uh, circle K. Is it Circle K? Yeah, they're doing the same thing. They're just, yep, I was there it's yesterday. Just, it's a sanctum of fuckery. Yep. Oh. Sanctum of fuckery. I like that. How many, how many topic, or how many titles do we have this week? Like seven. Right, Do you remember so any of them? So she can hear this it. This is very important. She's, I, I hadn't seen you laugh at anything I had said ever this hard. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you said it was really that funny. I've but... laughed at a lot of shit that you've said. That's You're doing yourself a disservice because you're a funny dude when you want to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, okay. Yeah, let's hear it. Literally just all, just grocery shopping and, and I pay less. I'm walking out. <laughs> I'm walking out. There's a woman walking in front of me, right? She stops dead in her tracks where I like fucking run into her. And she turns around and she goes, Oh, Lordy, Lord, I about forgot my scratchings. <laughs> and I just scratch. And then just. Like, Hashtag Indiana. I just. Uh, uh, I couldn't think of a goddamn thing to say. I'm just like. Oh, no, I mean, what do you say to that? Like. She said it to you directly. But she- oh, yeah. She oh, just yeah, looked oh, yeah. at She, she looks looked- right at me. She said, oh, Lordy, Lord, I about forgot my scratchings. And I'm like, go get them. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I'm like, I, I, okay. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's See, awesome. Like that oh, my God. Oh, Lordy. How did my scratchings? And you look into their eyes, which is the window it's, of the yeah, soul. Yeah, it's yes. like... I do. It's almost like, like your, your Goliath slow turn. It was, but hers was like instant connect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> was, She's there was no slow was like right now. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm like... So we're going to go a little bit over two hours. We I are. Need, I need to touch on these. I need... Mm. I have a topic. Remember, we we tangented from the topic that I was about to start. All right, real quick, go. Real quick, get to this because I also have another topic that I want to talk All specifically right, with Joe. Go, you're, you're, you're... All right, we'll do that first. Yes. No, I want to get to that. Okay, then let's go. Oh, is this so, the topic that we exploded on earlier? I don't know. Yeah, who knows? So uh, <laughs> I will go into this more next week. Um, but I I watched a thing with it. I'll make this real short. I watched a thing with Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, here recently. And black science man. Black science man. Mm. They really do be like that sometimes. <laughs> um, I love that it, picture. They really do be black science people sometimes. But so <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I say his full name out of respect. Yes. The man is a, the man is fucking smart. Yeah. You know, say whatever you want politically about the guy, but the guy's fucking smart. You got to give him respect for that. And he's a scientist. He believes in the scientific method and teaching people what, yeah. what science is. So he says that we – that he specifically is working on proposing a restructure of our education system. And that's really important for me because I am – I've made the bold statement on this show that our educators are extremely overpaid. Because of their time and the lack of effort, and this isn't. You mean teachers are overpaid? Educators, which is a teacher. You think they're overpaid? They're absolutely overpaid because of not because of the monetary wage that they have. It's because the amount of time that they have off. There is a, and I don't remember what state it was in, but there is a group of teachers in a school system that have sixty-one paid days off a year. That's not including their summer vacation. That's not including their sick leave. 61 paid days off a year. You know how many fucking paid days off the military gets? Not very many. They fucking die for this shit. You half-ass pretend to teach somebody, and you get 61 fucking paid days with your family? Hot fucking meals and a nice bed to sleep in? Fuck yourself. Anyway, 
So he has proposed, or he is putting together a proposal for educational reform, where we actually teach, and I, I touched on it a little bit in the beginning of the episode, where, so the scientific method is in place for one reason. It's so you do not believe something is true that is actually false. And so you do not believe something is false that is actually true. And I don't remember the verbiage that he specifically used, but it's an, it's an actually science, it's an actual science that, that people study, like sociologists study. This is a class that he is going to propose be taught to high school age kids. Because it's, it's absolutely necessary. Life skills is one of the classes that he's going to propose be taught. Not half-ass home ec. Not half-ass uh, fucking life and careers. Real shit. How to do your taxes. Yeah. How to write a check. Yes. How to be a fucking adult. How to cook. How to cook. How to, te- how to take care of children. Not fucking child development where I go and I take home a robotic baby. fucking baby home. How to actually take care of children. How to actually raise a generation. And... Though I disagree with some of I like of the way you said that. Yes. Raise a generation. Raise a generation. Because our educators are raising the future of our nation, of our species, of the world, and they are failing. They are absolutely failing. And it's not just the educators. It's, it's parents right. as a whole are failing. Yeah. But it's parents saying it's the educator's job. It's the educator saying it's parents' job. It's, it's both of their responsibilities. Mm-hmm. It's the administration and the fucking biological parents. Or people who step in, like yourself, to be a surrogate parent. It's your responsibility to teach her son how to be a man. It's your responsibility how to teach her daughter what to expect (laughs) of a man. That is your responsibility. Yeah. So, stop it. I gotta make this fast. So, he has a lot of really good proposals for this. And... No one, no one talks about this shit. So I'll get into it more le- more next week. But I just wanted to touch on that a little bit because black science man is black science man. But the guy knows what he's talking about, and he has some really good ideas. Mm-hmm. So, um, so real quick, uh, my topic with Joe. <clears throat> Joe. Mm. We're gonna be moving in together. I'm gonna be moving into We're your gonna home. Moving in together. You mean I'm gonna be moving into your my home. tenant. Miranda and her kids are gonna be moving in with me. In your domicile. In your domicile. In your home. The mm. the place that you own. The the place that you call. Wait wait wait. Home. Say that part again. Place that I own. Yes. The place the bank that owns. I. <laughs> you're working point. on. It. I understand. I'm a home. What I, I feel you, dude. Yeah, what yeah, are yeah. you? Okay. So it what? Really do be like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> What are you looking forward to at for me as a roommate? For me as a tenant. <laughs> well, she's just an added bonus. She is. She <laughs> is. She I'm, I'm gonna, home cooked I'm, meals. I'm gonna i I'm gonna speak for Joe right out of the gate. Pay rent on time. You're gonna oh, yeah, to say that. that, right? I've, <laughs> yeah. I've yeah, I've never had an issue with that. I'm not saying you are, but I I'm mm. just gonna speak for Joe and say he's looking yeah. forward to some rent on <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna get some cook. home cooked meals. You're gonna get a buddy that kind of hangs out with you from he time to time. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're we're gonna jam together. Uh, it's gonna be great. Can you play a song for more than thirty seconds? If we jam together, if we, if we're jamming, <laughs> it's not playing an actual song, and we're right. we're just jamming music. Andy, come join us. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. We're no. almost done, I promise. No. Hey, but what, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to living with you. I, I really haven't thought about it. <laughs> I'm, 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 genuinely, I'm genuinely looking forward because I, I, I feel like we're going to have uh, an enjoyable experience in terms of like music. Oh, I was just planning on locking myself in my bedroom and watching my new TV. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, man. No, like I, I've – shit, I, I've had like nine nieces and nephews that – you know, I'm, I'm kind of close in age with because all my siblings are older, so I'm used to like kids being around and stuff. And I still yeah, got. I hope because my kids are awesome, but they're not going to be used to this. It's <laughs> going to be a, a, an adjustment. Uncle Joe. Oh Lord. We talked about <laughs> this earlier in the show. Uncle Joe. <laughs> they're good. Good. 
No. They're aliens. <laughs> they are. They can be hellions, but they All are good kids. Can Blaine can, can be a hellion. I can be a hellion. I am a hellion. You know what no. I'm looking forward to? What? Building a studio in Joe's basement. Yes. Mm. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. Are you looking forward to Tyler and Blaine being there at Time Green Wednesday? Tyler, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm there all the time. I mean, so, so you're like, you're already he's gonna always, be there. He's in a constant state of excitement. <laughs> Rachel, or er, not Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> Jennifer says, "Why? Well, that's, that's a Rachel type comment." Creepy Uncle Jennifer Joe. says, "Creepy Uncle Joe." <laughs> I'm not gonna call you creepy Uncle Joe. Wow. I'm gonna call you cool. Uncle do you want to be part of? Do you want to be part of a drunk catastrophe? Oh God. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, oh, God. We don't know. Probably our first episode Maybe. of Joe's. <laughs> oh, since, shit. It's, since it's over shutdown. Sure. Oh, oh yeah. Are since you, it's are over. Are doing it 4th of July? We uh, I would not be in town 4th of July. Okay. Well, we could do it the second week. Yeah. I have easily. no fucking idea what's going on 4th of July. So. I'll be in Fowler. Maybe we won't do it the second <laughs> week. <laughs> Maybe we, we will do it the play, first week. I just show up and play. <laughs> Maybe we I will do it. I just hit st- stuff with sticks. We could do an extra. <laughs> That's all I do. Drunk Astrophy can be an extra. So we'll we'll figure it out. We got a month. Can I bring the stripper? And the Patron? Slightly less than a month. Uh, no. But, okay, so real quick, I have a topic. What do you guys feel? So last... I still have something to talk about, so... We're going to get to it next week. No, well, we're going to get to it. We're two hours right now. We're, we're going to get to it today. It's quick, I promise. It's quick, I promise. We didn't even talk about work today either. Nope. But, okay, so... That's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I, I definitely know. have to bring this up this week. All right, well, talk about it. So last week, we premiered a new show on the network, Kids for Sale. What the I fuck? really enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed it. My wife enjoyed it. That's, and everything. that's awesome. That is awesome. Miranda, you need to listen to it. It's, it's a great show. Uh, you listen to my show. You listen to my show. What were you doing on your way here? I don't care. What were you doing but on any, your way anyway, here? But anyway, anyway, so... <laughs> Uh, we have a new show, Kids for Sale. It's hosted by uh, Chris Plant and his wife. Uh, I think her name's Ashley. I'm bad. Uh, sometimes I can be bad with names. Sometimes. One episode deep. We it's haven't one, been here yeah. very long. Uh, my only complaint, I've I've said it in our little group chat. Uh, she tends to whisper and talk away from the mic, so it's like it's yeah, hard to hear yeah. her sometimes. Uh, but Sorry. you know, they'll, it was their first episode. They'll get better. Nervous? And you know, he said she was oh, kind of nervous. nervous. You were nervous. So um, okay. So them, them, that they just talked about like raising their kids and playing, uh, the the topic of, it was t ball, which is awesome. Like you know, that's something I'm going through right now. T-ball? I say we are going through. We are going. You've done it. You've done it before. I haven't. So it's something you I'm going to through. Good yeah, job. I finally got there. You. I can finally hit from the, the big league. Uh, uh, but no, one of the things yeah, we're up in the big league. One of the things uh, that Chris brought up was living in the moment, and by mm. that I mean not living through your phone, taking the pictures and videos the whole time, and that is something that I believe carries on not just from what he was talking about, taking constant video and pictures of his kids playing t-ball but like at concerts you see the people like live because live streaming is a thing now for everyone yeah i mean we're doing it right now but uh no people people do this at concerts where they'll live stream like either the entire concert or a couple songs or whatever and some bands are getting pissed yeah and they're they're holding their phones up the entire time and people behind them that aren't doing that i mean given there are some people behind them that are when in the case of like Miranda and I at a concert, we ha- we have to sit behind all these phone screens rather than enjoying like the actual people that are on stage. Yeah, and you know I just wanted to hear you guys' thoughts on living in the moment because I you know I used to be that person. Not okay, not that I was that person, but I would take like a video of a song. I would take some pictures for a song or two, and then that's I would understandable. and then that's, I would enjoy that's reasonable. it. Reasonable, but I don't. Not the whole concert. But I I don't even do that anymore. I barely take any pictures. I take any video anymore. Uh, I just enjoy it. So this this is a double edged sword because I as far as concerts go, if you're live streaming the concert, you're a fuck. Yeah. You are a fuck. If you are recording that concert and putting it on YouTube, you are a fuck. I'm sorry. 
Some, those, uh, no, no, no. Those people are working for you to entertain you. They're not working to entertain the millions of people on YouTube and all of your friends. They are working for you. Yeah. That's the way that I look at it. When I go to a concert, and that's why I'm so critical of bands, they are there to impress me and not anyone else. And if they impress me, I'm impressed. If they don't impress me, I'm critical. But you know what? That's that's it's me. It's my moment. Yeah. It's my experience. They're doing it for me. If you're live streaming that shit, you are a piece of shit. Period. Dot. I'm, now, gu- I'm guilty of it. Now, if you're well, t- now if you're taking kids. now if you're taking a picture or a group of pictures, and if you're live streaming a song, it's oh, like man. it's like you know what? You might introduce somebody else yeah. that's never been never been around this band or this music or you know, I've seen people live streaming events at art galleries. Right. Like, how fucking blasé is that? Like, right. Oh, oh, I'm stream- live streaming this art gallery. But you know what? You might, you might, in that live stream, expose some kid to be the next Picasso. Yeah. That would have never seen it. So it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, everybody's yeah, got their own well, thing. And you don't need to do like the entire. That's concert. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah for like, sure. So um, for sure, like I went uh, last year with a couple guys at McGuire. We we all went out to see Eagles of Death Metal at the Vogue yeah, in Indy. Yeah, that's cool. That was fucking badass. So I mean, we're like a couple people away from the stage. Jesse Hughes right fucking there. Like you know, I'm gonna get a few shots and record some of their solos and shit, of course, but. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, phone's going down. Jesse Hughes is fucking pointing right at us. I'm like, oh, you know, freaking the fuck out. It's a cool moment, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to be in that moment. I don't need my fucking phone to tell me, hey, I was here. You know so, what I mean? So here's the other part of that double-edged sword, especially as, uh, as a parent and a husband and a family man. I hate having my picture taken. Oh. I hate, and it, it's not partly, partly because I'm uncomfortable with who I am as a person. But it, it's not because, oh, I hate taking pictures. I'm vegan. Thank you. The, Sorry. The point is, <laughs> if you and I are, if it's just you and I, or, or Joe and I, or Miranda and I, if we're going somewhere to experience something together, that's our moment. That's no one else's moment. Mm-hmm. It's no one else's business. Mm-hmm. It's no one else's input. That is our moment. That is that's ours, and that means something to me. That's almost like my Professor Joe's moment. Yeah. Yeah. That, we'll we'll get the... at that a later. <laughs> you know. Sorry. Go ahead. So go ahead. That, yeah. that that is our moment. That's special to me. You're uh, special to me too. If I have too. to stop every five minutes at a family gathering or on vacation or something to t- to pose for a picture, that's stupid as fuck. You don't think your daughter? Yeah. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because life is not about looking in the past. Life is about living the experiences that you have. Now, the caveat to that is I've traveled all over the world. Some of the traveling I've done, I did as an infant and toddler. My dad tags me and shit every day. Like, hey, you've been here. I don't remember being there. But it's cool being able to see where I've been because now I have an excuse to go back. Yeah. To take my kid there and my wife there and my family there and say, you know what? I not take pictures? I was here. But here's the thing. If you take all of your time taking pictures so you can remember where you've been, were you really there? Don't take all your time taking pictures. No, 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 no. no. If you make special time to take pictures out of experiencing something, were you really there? Were you really experiencing it? Absolutely not. No, I, I believe no questions asked. If Absolutely you take not. A little bit of time to take a picture to remember it. If you okay, so if you and I are in the Louvre mm-hmm. in France, and we're standing in front of the Mona Lisa, mm-hmm. and I take a hundred pictures of you on not my phone, 100. I can hold my camera button on my phone and take seven hundred pictures of you in seven seconds. Okay, That's 700. a lot. That's seven seconds. Sure too. Okay. That's yeah. seven seconds of our lives that is one hundred percent entirely wasted. No. no, no, no. Think of, listen to me, because that is this is our experience. 
Okay, but when you're older, no, no, no. I want to go back to those L- times. Listen, you listen. Will be for okay, that. when we are older mm-hmm. and we want to go back to Ooh, those shit. times, we don't have the ability to go back to those times because our mind is gone. So, okay, you have to hear me out. You have to let me finish. Your wife makes an awesome point, and I will get to that. Okay, wait a minute. So, you. so you and I are mm-hmm. in our late twenties right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so say say you and I are a couple. We're mm-hmm. married. We're traveling the world. We're doing all these fantastic Whoa, things. Whoa, bro! Fuck off, dude. <laughs> <laughs> if you die, if our if our if you die and Skylar dies, we're next in line. So oh shit! This is how it goes. <laughs> so, Jesus. Um, and I'm still stuck with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I still got my fucking dog. So, so say and I, say you and I, through our late twenties and and mid thirties, we Shit. travel the world and we experience all these magical things. Yeah. Sucks and to suck. And we take hundreds of pictures. When we are losing our mind, Christ. which I've is lost it. extremely common now, yeah, I know. when we hit our late fifties, early sixties, our minds go. Right. Because we are putting such a strain on our brain throughout our life that our brains can't handle it. It just goes. <laughs> What good does that picture do? Because uh, hold on, hold on, that hold on, hold on, hold on. I've gone through several dimensions. I, I no, I get it, I get it. But you and I take those pictures together, and and we're we're putting in this extra effort, yeah. and we're doing this shit, and we're taking these pictures instead of just fully, one hundred percent living in the moment. Right. This is our moment. No one can take this away from us. Pictures can be lost. Pictures can be taken away. Memories can be forgotten. Memories and pictures. So. No, just listen. Let me finish. Don't let him finish. We are. I'll fall asleep again. This is us. The world, the the universe, can never take this away because we were here in time. This is us. Oh crap! This is us. <laughs> okay. When you lose your mind and it's gone, it is one hundred percent gone. You might be able to bring that memory fragment back for a day, but it's gone. Right. <laughs> does it really matter? Yes. Okay. It so, does not because we experienced that together. That was ours. Your memory goes. Let her talk. Yes. You forget that. You have that picture. It can bring back that memory even for a day. Is that not worth anything? No. Because, say, you're my wife right. and you die. Before I do, wow, which is I not love, common. Normally, there's that pause there. Say you're my men wife die and you before die. Their spouse. We have a shorter life expectancy than women because our bodies go through more stress in a lifetime than women do, even with childbirth and any time. So, and we have to put up with your guys' shit. No, I just said the same damn thing. Yeah, I don't. So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so no you die unexpectedly Rocky. before me, and I have dementia. And I'm losing my mind, and I see a picture through you of you and all of a sudden in a flash of memory it comes back to me man in 2021 we were in the louvre and it was great we were traveling we were happy but my wife is gone so so you have you have a um what's the fucking hormone um endorphin thank you you have an endorphin fucking good job brain and then Instant depression. Yes. Because my wife is gone. What is worth it? It, it is. I, I feel like it is worth it. It's not so worth it. I'd say it's die, worth it. Cause not remember anything at all. If Skylar I'd say it's were, worth it. If Skylar were to die uh, today, you don't remember a day I day. would never want to remember a day of her ever wow. again. Wow. Because no, I'd want to remember. she is so important to my life. Right. And, and I hate to use this phrase that I couldn't live without her. I do not want to endure that pain. I have such a high tolerance for pain, and I have such a strong moral compass, and I, I, I advertise myself as this heartless, cold person, but there is two things on this earth that have kept me alive, and that is her and my child. And if I lose either one of those things, let alone both of them, if I lose either one of those things, I don't want to be alive anymore. Because I have no reason to live other than those two things right there. Because I don't believe in money. I don't believe in happiness. Happiness is an imaginary fucking thing. Okay, so let me ask you. Something. Those two things are what I've got. If I lose those, end me. Boy, my Sky life just dies, went. But your daughter lives. Do you not want your daughter to remember all the memories from her past? I want my I want her? my daughter to be happy. Okay. If she wants to, if she wants to look at photographs of something, 
You and have remember, to take those photographs, though, to have those photographs. For let's just say I took photographs. Uh, mm-hmm. If my daughter looks at a photograph of my wife and starts bawling, I will burn every single photograph. She's going to cry. She'll cry, but you don't want to take that away from her. You want her to remember that. Our job as parents is to protect our children it from is. pain. If you are causing your children pain through a that's, physical That's pain, a different kind of pain, though. It's, it's a pain that they're going to Pain have, is pain. It's, it's a pain that... Pain's part of life. life. You have to go yeah, you that. can't pain avoid it. Pain is life. Because Your happens, brain accepts pain as one thing. What happens, pain is pain. What happens? Skylar dies. You see your daughter look at those pictures at 12 years old. She cries. You burn those pictures. 12 years old, you don't know what's going on in life. So when she becomes an adult and she's like, okay, they're going to make me cry, but I need those memories. My dad burns. You them. don't need do memories. Do? Oh, my Lord. You don't. Do. You, you don't. Do you not remember your daughter being born? Your wedding? I remember my daughter being born. Not through a picture, through my eyes. Right. That's a memory. Yeah, <laughs> but that memory doesn't control my life. <laughs> if I lose that memory, it's gone. <laughs> I, I, okay, so I watched my grandfather die mm-hmm. on my living room floor. I watched him die. There are days that I cannot remember what his face looks like. I see him in a picture, which there are not many of, and I'm like, man, I, that's him? How Weird. Old were you? I was 11. Okay. So I, I, I see a picture of him, and I'm like, man, that's, that's not what I remember him looking like. I don't remember his life through pictures. I remember his life through the experiences that him and I have. Seeing a picture of him does not mean anything to me because that is not what I experienced. That is a piece of paper and plastic. That means nothing. The, the lessons that he has taught me, the things that I experienced because of him, and the happiness that I have had in a lifetime of unhappiness, of depression and sadness and anxiety, that is what I focus on. Not the picture that doesn't mean anything. I have that experience. So that is the important the picture, part. How can you put a face to that? I don't need a face. I don't need a face because I have the experience. I, I've got I've got two grandparents left, one on either side. You know, I've lost one on each side. I love seeing pictures of my my granddad on my dad's side, my grandma on my mom's side. I, I miss them, but I mean, I'm not gonna like some once in a while it invoke some painful memories that, since they're not here anymore. But I oh, fuck, I still love seeing pictures of them, like. Pictures yeah. of my grandpa holding my young nieces or nephews when they were little baby right, that, babies. That, that's strong, powerful shit. I get it. I love that. But, but I watched that man die. That man was my dad. Okay. I watched that man die. I don't want to. I don't want to relive. No, that. no, no. I can understand that. But I think it's it's just it's going to be different, like for anybody, really. I mean, and different experiences, where it, whether it be somebody that's you know gone because of death, or somebody that's gone because they're a stupid bitch and they leave. Right. And I don't want to see any of those pictures. <laughs> right. No. I and. Get you. Then those are no, yeah, that kind of shit. That's gone. I don't want to relive that kind of crap. Yeah, yeah. I have a nephew that I held in my arms for two and a half hours that died, and I have pictures of him. He was twenty-two weeks old, but I'm glad I have those pictures because I can remember that. Yeah, I can be happy with your wife in heaven or hell. Those are both <laughs> imaginary things. They are. <laughs> Flying spaghetti monster. She said it, not me. I hell yeah. Said. Yeah, pasta far. Ow! Oh, oh, Jesus shit. Christ, woman! <laughs> pasta faritism. I'm down right. for it. So, I have ranted enough. Yeah, you've ranted a lot. We can agree to disagree. I hold yeah, no I hold no importance on physical items. I So, here's a perfect example. My wife is infatuated with our home. That fucking oh. dump that I'm going to call a dump. It's not a dump, but it's a dump to me because it doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. Mine too. I have lived everywhere and anywhere, and I can pack all of my shit up and move in 24 hours and be just as happy as I am today, if not more happy. It doesn't mean anything. It's a physical thing that means nothing. A picture is no different. Life's experiences mean more than life's memories. I agree there, <coughs> but I, I I I mostly just wanted to bring this up because you know I thought it was cool that they brought it up on Kids for Sale, 
uh, which is on the Journey into Comics Network every other Friday. Ah, ah plug. Plug. Yeah. But I thought it was really cool. And uh, why are you shying away from me? But I know I thought it was really cool because um, – Don't touch me. <laughs> I thought it was cool because I used to take so many pictures. I <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. I used to take so many pictures. I used to take so many videos. And now I just – I want to live that experience yep. now. So um, you, both of you bring up excellent points. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm like right in between. Not, you know, I enjoy <laughs> looking at memories of the now, past. Now, I will say, I will add the caveat. There is a happy medium taking pictures. If you, my daughter walking on the beach for her first time, that's going to be a big deal. I'm going to take a picture. But I'm not. Why? But what? Why? Not for me. <laughs> for her? For her eventually, maybe. Okay. But I, there's a lot of pictures of me as a child that I don't give a shit about. I don't fucking care a lick. My parents and my family cared about that. I don't give a shit. So. You're also very different than most human beings. I'm very different than most <laughs> human beings, and I'm glad you brought that up. All right, guys. We're I've is... also lived a very hard life. We're going to cut this. I don't like you. <laughs> We're having... We can do that. We this can... is a good fucking podcast. <laughs> Pop. This That's is good. This is good. Next week, Joe. Shit. We're gonna we're gonna discuss more <laughs> next week, but until then, you know we've had a good show. Please. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Yeah, thank Being you. Being a mystery guest yeah. and not wanting to come, but wanting to come, but wanting to bring your dog, but not wanting to bring your dog. That was more of a threat. I know, I get it. <laughs> but but thanks thanks for thanks for coming because we haven't had, we haven't had a guest for a few weeks, and not that we need one, but. You've, you've added some some good yeah it was it was a good show good points and it was a good show you helped make a good show uh, You're but a regular game for game. those watching and listening uh we're live on Facebook on the podcast review page every Wednesday roughly around 5 30 or six depending uh and uh if you, you, home or not. please check <laughs> please check us out you know, comment on the live hey, stream. Blake, enjoy us. Six. Enjoy it. Oh, fuck, uh, we worry. respond to the comments. It's fun. Uh, if you don't, check us out on the Journey into Comics Network on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, all that. Google Play Music uh, every Thursday. So uh, I have to interrupt you. My wife says we should have a dog and cat podcast. I will bring Walkie next week. Walkie? Rocky, fuck yourself. You haven't even drank. We've been drinking. He's, he's at two sips, and he's shit I'll give you cloud. a two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank thank you, Joe. Was that just Doris' witch's cackle? Yes, that was the witch's cackle. So uh, This is like the fourth or fifth time Andy's left the house. We've we've heard his car start and leave. Like On top on top of all the plugs that uh, that the my flash-obsessed friend oh. over here has just laid on you, uh, keep it. Keep your peepers peeled uh, peepers. on the Podcastrophy Facebook page for some wacky polls. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow, but I think I have a good one Work. planned. So. You should do beard. Keep, for keep beard. your eyes peeled for the podcast. Beard page. for beard. You know. Thank you, Joe, for joining us. Thank you, Miranda, for always being here when thank you can. Thank God we have a room mic. And we have a room mic, so to pick you up. Because you don't have a microphone. You're going to start having a microphone if you're going to be Thanks for not pointing here. that okay, out and so, making me look like so a jackass. Honestly, Skylar and I were talking about this the other day. We should have a podcast for the episode hosted by her and Skylar. I agree. Oh, really? I agree. You guys would just sit there like this. Nope, I would talk. <laughs> well, you would, you talk, would talk. You would be like, hey, I have this question. My wife would go, I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, guys. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Joe. Once yeah, again thanks, for joining. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks and, for making uh, me your mystery guest. And Tyler. Trying to piss Blaine off. <laughs> that wouldn't piss me off. I've been thinking about bringing you on for a while. I just oh, figured, I feel I just figured, I just figured I'd wait until we lived together to bring you on. I knew on. it wouldn't piss I, him I, off. That's why I brought you on. I like I like that when Nate asked you why I hadn't been on here. And he's like, because I don't want him on here. And I like right 10 minutes before that, I told Nate, like, he doesn't want me on there. <laughs> And then, like, he said, he's like, I mean, he's going to be living with me. So, like, and then he asked you that. He goes, Nate why not? Because I'm going to be living with him. I'm not. Oh, worried. yeah, not Phillips. Yeah, obviously, I'm sorry, bud. Nate Vanderbilt. Tyler, thank you for being the I awesome talk a lot. the awesome co-host. And, you know, you're the content of this show. You're the filibuster. You, you I'm are the fat guy. You are the star <laughs> of the gay. show. I'm the I'm, fat gay. <laughs> fat gay. See, I can't be on the show a lot because I just do nothing but Tyler and I. Oh, oh yeah. I, would, I will. 
I will sit and watch that all day. Uh, Tyler, you're the star of the show. I'm just the facilitator. I appreciate you know, that. And I, and I enjoy that. I, I, I walked in here and I took over your show. I enjoy I feel bad most days. No, it's all do. good. I enjoy, I enjoy the role that the roles that we have and I enjoy Me having the, the show. And you this up. <laughs> yes. The bitch and the handler. But all right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> and big balls. And big balls. He's got the ball sack. <laughs> He's got the sack. Yeah. This is podcast your fee. Yeah. Please make every day. A big sack day. No. A balls deep blain day. <laughs> Please make every day a big dick day. Sack. Bye, guys. <laughs> Yeah.